that this month. Um, for June, we had 1,483 calls for service in the East area. 593 of them were in Roseland. Uh, total of 20 arrests in Roseland. Uh, we have presently 13 deputies working in Roseland and Mojave area. Uh, any other questions? How large is that area? And how many deputies per community? It, it's a large area, and it, the, the deputies go to the community that's got the calls to service. Is there how, how soon will you guys be in the RCSD building and actually have a presence here <coughs> more okay. frequently? As soon as the computers and the internet are hooked up, we're supposed to be in there, but I haven't got a definite date for that. It was supposed to be a couple months ago, and I think yeah. that's changed. Well, we're starting to suffer, so. In the rest of the uh, 20 arrests you had in Roseman, what were the uh, offenses? What was the range of stuff on that? The uh, range was from assault with a deadly weapon on down. I, don't, I didn't bring any specifics on that. Okay, I'm just curious. Like, is there anything the community can do to help you uh, get those things further along? Uh, as far as telephones and computer lines and. Uh, I think it's all based on whatever internet company they're going with. That company's going to get the line on this stuff in there so they can look up with The uh, assault with a deadly weapon was at the drive by we had Saturday. And uh, uh, that was in the third. Uh, this is for, the stats I gave you is for our first year. What's it looking like for this one? Just it's the same. It's always the same. It goes in and kind of... Sergeant, how many deputies are on staff at a time? Uh, duty at a time? Duty, thank you. Uh, <laughs> it depends. It fluctuates big time. Uh, we go from two at night or more, uh, two to four at night, and same numbers during the day and afternoon. That's for Roseman and Mojave. That's for Rosemont and Mojave. Doesn't include Borum? Doesn't include Borum. Borum is part of Mojave. There is no Borum. So Cal City? No, Cal City has got their own people. Yeah, they're almost Cal City. Will you go all the way up to 270 or? The area for Rosemont actually goes to 310. Um, you know, very small calls beyond 170. But most of that is either. Um, Solar fields or fair land. So, what can, account, what can we as a community do to convince the county that we need more service? Talk to the county more. Uh, we, we need more services here. And yet, even if we were 100% staff, we wouldn't have enough deputies. I know. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard a terrible rumor, and I don't know if you could add any validity to this or not. But I was told by more than one person that the sheriff's department was told to be hands off when it, it was to involve the uh, marijuana shops here in town. Would you be able to elaborate on that? Marijuana shops are basically going to be covered by code compliance for the most part. I mean, as far as the criminal activity that's happening in Adam all the time, you know? We were told anything, we're, 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 we're called. We go where we're called. If so there's crimes happening there, we. So is there any surveillance of the marijuana shops? Okay. Other I wouldn't tell you if we were doing that. I'm sure there was. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. There should be. How soon do you think that you would be able to get to full staff? No, I mean, even if 100% is not, even if full staff is not enough to cover this area, and you're only growing at whatever percentage you're at now, is there any chance for us to ever get to 100% here? That's one well, well, what is If I may, if I may yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak in a little bit. I'm the new county CAO. I'm the money guy. Uh, I work directly with the board. Uh, I was invited here to speak to you all tonight by Zach. Uh, I'm going to talk a lot about a lot of these questions. So I, I don't know if the, the sergeant is in any position to answer sure. any of those. I don't think he knows. Uh, right. the, the, it's the sheriff that's making the decisions, and the sheriff. Uh, is whipsawed to some extent by uh, money and other planning. And so I'll try to answer as many questions as I can because we do have a, a 
plan, uh, even though we're in the budget crisis. So I'll try to answer all those questions. Appreciate it. So, you can see the sheriff's department's report and the highway patrol report. Those are simply giving you a status report of what's going on in the community and what they're dealing with and what they're facing. Uh, these guys don't have the information as far as you know who's you know that's that's in Bakersfield. And so I, I think it just goes to show level of frustration to kind of um, speaking out. Right. Yeah. And I, I just want to make a point, you know, that our sheriff's station here has been understaffed for a long, long time. And but nevertheless, uh, I couldn't we couldn't ask for a more dedicated police force and people that are there and do their damnedest to take care of problems even though they're spread thin. And they're, and they're go out to a 310th to Bacchus Road to Avenue A and the Air Force Base. Uh, the, uh, so, you know, that is a huge area. And they could have 100 cops in here, and that's still a huge area to cover. I don't think anybody's questioning the integrity or the dedication of the yeah. deputies in that town. No, that's, a, that's a given that they do their job and are dedicated. Uh, what we're concerned about is the support from the sheriff himself and the county leadership. Because there's exactly. a lack of resources being a lot of those communities. Is, well, that's uh, above his level. That's, that's the point. Well, so, then why is he here? Yeah. But, to give him the report. But I just wanted to just emphasize the point. These guys are doing a great job. And, uh, the more that we can do as a community with our eyes and our cell phones to make calls and let them know what's going on, it can help them out. I don't, I don't know that that's enough. Obviously, right. what it comes down to is people doing pretty, pretty much whatever they want, and they're long gone with whatever happened. A report's filed, and we have a page of statistics. Now what? The one on our street we've had. We, my truck's been broken. My personal truck. Well, his now. He didn't steal it. Um, that was broken pretty much beyond repair. We got it going. Uh, what was it? Three or four days ago, another truck was. We, we, I have the video. You saw the video. A drunk driver smashed into a car across the street from us. Our trailer's been stolen. My and neighbor's this has trailer. all been within the last eight months. It's on insane. On one street. street. <coughs> and then the street behind us, a woman almost got carjacked. Yeah, that I mean, was a couple on. days ago. So I think the problem we're having is you can call them in, which is encouraged. I understand that. But by the time anything's done, it, 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 it doesn't change anything. All it is is documented. Oh, boy. Now what? What do we do? Right. I mean, it really isn't that what it comes down to. I mean, no, not at all. No, I mean, no that has things. nothing to. No. Yeah, it's not there. It's, it's, not, it's not an integrity thing. It's, 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 it's not you. Got excellent job of what you got. There aren't police here. It's just frustrating. Yes, we don't and have. The, that's really what it comes down to. Okay. That's for the money guy. Yeah. The money guy. Yeah. He's yeah. going to be standing up here, and he'll be able to answer those questions for you. Why don't we wait till we get to that part of the agenda? Ask one of the questions. How many people have been to the lucky guy? How many people have been to the lucky guy recently here in Rosemont? So I know I have. Can't hear you. How many people in this community have recently been a victim of crime? That says a lot right there. That does. That's all on the county. You can go into a purpose to destroy your own neighborhood. That's, that's all on the county. I'm sorry, but it is. subject here. Yeah. We have the sheriff's report. We need to get him done so we can move on down the line. Or otherwise, we'll be here till midnight. So we have a big agenda to cover. Everybody will get a chance to, to uh, get their opinions out and do get their questions answered. So at this point, if there's 
no other questions about the sheriff's report, and then we can move on. Yes. It's going to be the same number. We're still split with the hobby for 36 that are signed for. So, could you ballpark about a, close to 100% that you guys would like to be at your road for the money guys? Well, what I would like is 20, 25 that we share. Well, that's what we should work Money guys, that's what we need. Because I don't know, the community has not necessarily been the direct victim of a crime. I think we all have because the businesses that we frequent, the restaurants that we should you know, eat at, the businesses where we shop are all get victimized by crime. So is that 25 split between here and Mojave or just here in Roseland? Mm -hmm. so? I would like to see all so that's a That's a wish list. <laughs> What's reasonable? Something to report on. Six. 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 That is like I said, that's above my savor anything right now. Okay, we'll, we'll work on something. Well, we appreciate your efforts. We have 32 officers, four sergeants, um, and we patrol the same communities that the Sheriff's Department patrols, the unincorporated. So we patrol the communities of Rosemont, Mojave, Bora, North Edwards, Thatchkey, and up by Annual Kern Ridgecrest. So we have 980 square miles of highway that we patrol. So we also have a big beat. Um, we prioritize our calls based on what the call is. Um, you guys mentioned the, the DUI that hit the car on that street. Yes. I believe that's the one we have it on camera from the yes, house. That was us. And we arrested that person. Yes. And so you, guys were, you guys were. <laughs> but, it, it, but it's not that. It's that some of these, they are being, the crimes are being handled and investigated. They're being investigated. Sometimes they just take time. You don't see that instant gratification of the handcuffs, but with time and, and with the efforts that you don't see behind the scenes, we are getting prosecutions on these crimes that we're being called to and that we're investigating. So I just want you guys to understand that. Um, the mission of the Highway Patrol, we handle all traffic enforcement in all the unincorporated areas, but our second duties are we back up our brothers here. And this community really has, and should understand it, you have a great working relationship with your law enforcement between the CHP and the Sheriff's Department. We back each other up. When there's a priority call, and if it's up on the freeway and I'm not available, he goes and takes it. If there's a priority call down here in Maha or Rosemont and they're not available, we come in and take it. So when you guys are calling for help and it's a true emergency, you're going to get a law enforcement response. And we're going to get there and we're going to do the best we can with the resources that we have at the county level, the resources we have at the state level. So we are trying to handle that. So maybe some of the smaller things, you know, you had to wait a while for us to get there. It happens. Um, we're all spread thin with resources. You know, we all, we all want more. I, I would like to have more than 32. I'd like to have 70 out of my office, but uh, we're not going to get it. So, but we are handling the best we can. We are backing each other. Um, we work out of one office, so what we do is we send our officers out in the communities, and we make them drive around for 12 hours. So I we've seen you guys a lot in my neighborhood, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. But we don't have a station in Rosemont, but, but we're here. We don't have a station in Boron, but we're there. And we, we just go out and deploy. And so we do the best we can. Um, and I will give you some stats. And you're right, we've seen a lot of collisions on Sierra Highway. Um, but we can't directly contribute it to those shots. We can say that we have a lot more northbound traffic coming from Lancaster uh -huh. Palmville. Uh, <laughs> what they're coming for? <laughs> They're not telling us. Chicken <laughs> fried. Uh, you get behind them and you can tell by where they're driving. Yep. They, yeah. Yeah. they get out at 30 miles an hour and they stay at 30. You can smell it. You can see it. 
They're a really but relaxed But we've had, uh, for CHP stats, just so I'll let you guys know, uh, we're looking at you as they are too. That's kind of how we always, we're a little bit behind. Um, statistically, CHP, we had 26 DUI arrests, 1,100 citations. So we're out there doing something. Um, and uh, 445 motor services. That's 445 <coughs> people in June that we either provided gas for them, transportation for them, or did something for them, some sort of public relations thing, or helping out somebody that was stranded or disabled. So uh, that's a lot for 32 officers. That's a lot. So that says that we're out there doing something. So um, the one thing I'd like to really make a comment on is I monitor Iron Rose on and all the other stuff. <laughs> I'm There's sorry. a lot of crimes <laughs> that are being reported on Iron Rose Mom with photographs that California Heart Patrol never gets called on. Right. And then there's a lot of comments saying our, the Heart Patrol and Sheriff's never even came out. Yep. And I'm sitting there reading this going, do you want to call me? I would love to come out if you call me. So, 911. <laughs> so, what I can ask for the community from the Heart Patrol standpoint is if you see something happen, especially somebody driving reckless, dangerous, uh, possibly DUI, or just running red lights, being crazy, call me. If I got somebody in the area, we'll, we'll stop them. Uh, some of these turn out where we get the call and we happen to have a unit right there. Sometimes we get the call and we don't. But there's also follow-up that we do do when we have time. Uh, even if you, we just get a plate, we do do something. We actually follow up on it. We've driven to people's houses and talked to them about their driving, especially when we have a video of it. Uh, the DA won't let us file on those. It has to happen in front of us. But we do, we do talk to them. And so we'll take it seriously, but please, you're our eyes. You're our ears. Call us and give us an opportunity to solve the crimes before they become bigger. Yeah. Are you planning on doing anything to vamp up around schools with schools starting again? We are. We are. We are, we are working with the schools. We're, we're still trying, we're actually working with this board on uh, trying to mitigate how Glendower and Rosemont Boulevard is going to work in with how the school is going to work the bus. And so there's still some, there's some things we're doing, we're working on. We're going to try and see how we're going to pull that off. Can I make a suggestion? Shut down 40th because they speed like there's no tomorrow going to West Park going the back way. Mm -hmm. West Park's one of our problems. <laughs> High school. Yeah, and Tropico. Yeah, we know. Right. Um, but yeah, thank you. We are, we are. We're trying to work on it. So, thank you. Does the CHP still dispatch out of Bishop? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you uh, call in, you call it Bishop, not. Well, not necessarily. Yeah, you could get Los Angeles or Barstow or Bishop, because you're right here on the LA County line. So sometimes that radio mishap happens. But you also sometimes could get LA County Sheriff too when you're so close to Avenue A. So it does happen every once in a while there's a delay, you have to wait for a transfer. But it doesn't affect our response. Just because the person's on a radio, you know, 140 miles away, it doesn't change anything. We're still here. There were some people over on the United Department doing a burnout for about an hour and a half, and I called in. And I stood in the door for two hours and nobody ever showed up. They did a burnout. That's, like that's a problem. United Street, Glendower, Roseland Boulevard, and all up and down our street for about an hour. Yeah, and, and to understand too. It was at 2 o'clock in the morning, so. Yeah. Uh, and and there's, there's, we do get a lot of, the Highway Patrol gets a lot of medical emergencies. I don't know if you guys know this, but Highway Patrol, most of us are EMTs or EMRs at best. We have large bags, medical bags, in trucks of our cars. Traffic collision or a medical emergency, people are trying to drive to the hospital but they're not making it, normally we're the first person there. And so we get there and we actually treat them and keep them alive and stabilize them. And we do a lot of that. And a lot of that happens in the middle of the night. And a lot of our resources, we're, we're dealing with this, so we get prioritized. We prior, so if we get the call and we have a traffic collision with injuries, or if it's two in the morning, we probably have a traffic collision with DUI, it's probably gonna go to jail. It might take us a while to get to that guy that's doing burnouts. I mean, uh, in it, but if we're available, we roll. We don't make our calls stand. Our guys will go from call to call to call to call until the next ship comes on. So it's not like we just sit there and then go get coffee. They roll. We just have to keep reprioritizing the calls based upon what's happening in our communities. And Rosemont isn't really one of our busiest communities for us. For us, Tehachapi keeps us busy. Highway 58 keeps us busy. Um, so when it comes to calls for service, this isn't really one of the bad communities for high personal assembly. We actually love, we love Rosemont. <laughs> question for you, I wanted to ask you specifically, a uh, huge dog problem in this town. I'm getting tired of getting attacked by people who refuse to put their dogs on leashes. 
I want to know, is it legal for me? You need to carry it. Well, then Kmart. I'm very serious. I'll divert that to the sheriff's department. Everybody in here laughs, you know what? We can call the police on a guy across the street who's got an aggressive German shepherd. Pepper spray does really well on dogs. Yeah. But you know what? I am not going to have myself attacked and bit or my dog by somebody's rabbit goddamn uh, pit bull or German shepherd. I'm not young enough now to be wrestling around hand to hand. I want to carry a knife. I'd like to have a gun. Uh, probably frown on that. No. But is it, is, is it legal, legal for me to carry a sheet knife? There are ways to carry it legally, but there are also illegal ways. That's why I'm trying to find out. You can carry it in certain ways. It is illegal. How can I get it? How can you put it on your belt? It's hanging down. It's right. not covered if by your covered, jacket. If it gets covered up by your clothing, it becomes illegal. Okay, as long as it's not covered by clothing, I'm good. You might want to contact a lawyer before you do something. One more thing. Oh, yeah. I want to introduce you guys. This is Robert Claus. He's actually worked in this community for over 18 years or such. He promoted, and like most highway patrol, when you promote, they make you go places. And uh, they sent him to uh, Bridgeport. Bridgeport. What a place to go. Huh? <laughs> I wasn't that lucky. I got San Francisco. But uh, so yeah, he, he got to Bridgeport, did his time, and now he's back. And so he's home, and we're happy to have him. So he'll be coming to some of these meetings for a while. So, Robert? I do have a question. California used to have teams of CHP officers who go to community to community fighting speeding in DUIs chance they still have that going we can get them here yeah we still do and we did one we did one this morning we uh, we hit the 14 hard this morning and we hit back at the hatchby side we hit uh no, I mean, they day. had a unit that spoke to you that were coming in augment the current county or la county yeah. does that do they but here what they do is they give me extra extra overtime money oh, okay. to focus and so i what i do is i'll grab five of my own guys who are familiar with the area and then we find what area is problematic and then we focus on it. And so this morning we hit the 14 in Rosemont area very hard, and then we hit the 202 very hard. And I've got four days next month that we're gonna do that again. I'm not gonna tell you which days. We'll know off my own road. Yeah, we'll know. <laughs> yeah, we're also going, probably gonna do a DUI checkpoint at some point in time soon. <laughs> You can all guess where it's Take it back from Africa. Do we have a special team on the graffiti or anything we could do to like... Well, from the hour control standpoint, I can't. No, I, like, I can't. What about the sheriff's So, okay, if you guys don't have anything else, remember CHP has a Facebook account, so it's Mojave CHP Facebook. If you're not on there, you can follow us on that. We'll let you know things that are coming up. And again, if you have any issues, you can go on to Facebook, send us a message. You can tell us who's driving fast or who's doing what. Uh, what they're doing, and we'll, we'll respond to it, uh, or just call our office during the whole business hours and move out there. I just like, there was a hand back in the back of the year. Oh, I was just going to ask if you guys want to move those checkpoints around. Everybody knows in Rosewood that. Well, no, here's the problem. There's a legal, there's some legal requirements that we have to follow. Yeah. And with those legal requirements, there has to be certain roadway configurations. There has to be certain dynamics. And unfortunately, Rosemont, another one will follow California law, only has uh, two locations yeah. that fall from those parameters that we can criminally prosecute. If we don't follow those, then every person who gets arrested gets away free off of technicalities. So you can't stick it outside of coaches? Absolutely. We are bound by legal reasons and certain things we have to do. We have to have certain signage and certain things. And there's a lot of things in play that we have to follow. And once we decide, once we find a community, we have to find how that community plays in, which is why some, some communities never have to use, do a DUI checkpoint because there's nowhere that we can lawfully do it to meet all the standards that's required by law. Wow. Sir? Thank you. Yeah. I, would, I would just like to say or recommend that maybe some of those overtime hours be spent on Diamond Street and through the highway. Or <laughs> we have because, you know, I mean, as uh, people live in the community, you see a lot of people driving under the influence of marijuana. We see a lot of illegal activity happening out in the open. I'm going to say like you know, my last four first drug sales drug sales and stuff like that. Here, I, mean, yeah. I mean, as far as secondary drug sales and stuff, if you sit in the parking lot of Carl's Harbor, for example, and just watch some of the pot shops, 
you'll see people go in and buy marijuana and turn around and sell it in the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so, that's good. It's not illegal. Anyway. So um, what I'm saying is this may be, you know, maybe we should focus some of that overtime on just patrolling uh, Diamond Street in that area. Because, I mean, you can't, go, you can't go one block without passing four marijuana shops. Yeah. Yeah. The, so, the voters have spoken uh, yeah, uh, I don't believe that's the case. I mean, because we, we were told, we were told, right. especially even by the Kern County Council's office, they actually recommended that we vote yes on the recreational marijuana so that it would in turn allow them to regulate those businesses. And I don't think we've seen any of the regulation on those businesses. No. So I know Jan January one they represent some point. of the community, but a lot of the citizens who voted on that. Uh, or even misled by our own county as far as what we should do in regard to that vote. So, or the promises that were made in regard to that vote. No, you're all right. Okay. Yeah. Hold, Thanks, hold on, hold okay. on. Anybody that has any questions or any comments on marijuana dispensaries, we will be discussing that in the agenda later on. And at that, I would please ask you to Keep your questions or comments about marijuana dispensaries till we get to that part of the agenda. Otherwise, we will be here all night and not get anything accomplished. So I just ask for your, keep your questions focused to the CHP and what they're reporting on so we can move on through the agenda. You will get a chance to talk about marijuana dispensaries. It's on the agenda in two different spots. So you'll have plenty of opportunities you uh, speak your mind. Mr. Woodall, if I could suggest one last thing and then I'm going to know what's going to say. Uh, he asked about the UI drug impairment. Folks are going to know. First of all, the California Health Control has made 100% of our personnel right now to this day, they are advanced drug trained. Okay, so they've gone through more training than any, any other officer gets out of an academy or what have you. And with that, when a person drives impaired under the influence of, of mm -hmm. marijuana, they absolutely go to jail. They absolutely get criminally prosecuted. Our officers go into court and absolutely testify as experts, and we get criminal prosecutions on them. And because it's a drug um, aspect of that DUI, there's some other things that they don't get where you would with DUI alcohol, so it's actually kind of harsher with the DUI drugs. So, and that enforcement that we are doing is absolutely zero tolerance. Um, we don't just give them a break. If they smoke pot and get behind the wheel, they go to jail, period. And that will not change regardless of what the law says, when it comes to if you need a doctor's note to buy it or you don't, it doesn't matter. Uh, get behind a wheel, smoke dope, go to jail. Period. Okay. That Kern County Fire Department. Anybody here from from them? All right. And Kern County Supervisor's Office. I do not have a report tonight. Okay. Uh, Rosen Community Watch. Okay, everybody, just a quick update tonight on some of the recent graffiti that we've taken care of. The wall over adjacent to the Roseman Garden Apartments, um, it was taken care of by the county on June 23rd. <coughs> Twelve days later, it was tagged again, and we got uh, more paint from the county and we were able to cover up the more recent tagging on July 13th and it was tagged again last night. So we are working with the Sheriff's Department uh, so they can identify the new tagging and they can get an idea if this is the recent, they know it's happening. Also over on Diamond Street, the new light poles were tagged on a couple of them down at the far end of, right over here. On July 5th, we did go to Bakersfield, picked up the paint, and we took care of those on July 13th. We also have the paint match for the planters, so anytime any of the graffiti is noticed on either the planters or the light poles, if they can contact us, we will be able to get that removed as soon as possible. You know, one thing to be very helpful, helpful I've sat through these kind of things, and so I did, 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 did. What I like to see is residents in this town. I like to see the police department. You draw me up the map of the city and tell me which parts of this town are being claimed by which gangs. I don't want to know about it. Seriously, it doesn't mean shit to me about an individual pulled and tagged and you painted the guy does it again next night. There's gangs moving into this town. The only ones who know where their areas, 
you know, are, are really bad. Nobody in this town does. I've been here 20 years. They would be the sheriff. You know? I'm saying, I mean, they give them this whole car. I'm not like that. I don't know, give it a How many cans of paint would it take to get a camera? Yeah. 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 Cameras. Yeah. Three cameras. It's yeah. a lot cheaper. That's not us. We do Wikipedia Bakery. We were surprised that the new light poles on Diamond Street lasted as long as they did before someone tagged them. That street does not deserve the money, I guess. <laughs> okay, any other questions of our community watch program? Why don't you give out your number so that so they know how to contact you? I just have a question. Um, pretty new. I'm being going on four years. Um, how do I get on the committee or whatever it is? So I could voice out my opinions and all that. Here. Is everyone here? Yes. Once a month. First Thursday of every month. We're just people from town. Yeah, we're working on the same thing. Yeah, I want to get more involved. What can I do to get more involved? Because I want something visual to show that something's getting done in, in the thing because obviously this was a small town when I moved into it was very very quiet when mm -hmm. I moved in in the past three years that I've been here I've seen a lot of change mm -hmm. and I care for my kids because they're growing up here so as a parent and children that are growing up here I don't want my children to grow up in the same um I don't want them to be exposed. exposed exactly to what's going on right now because I came from the city in that way to get away from all that. Mm -hmm. I came to get away because I thought this would be the best place to do it. And so obviously it's turning out to be the same way. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're fighting back. Just follow this. Yeah, we don't want the LA mentality. But I um, mean, like you said, you're you don't have to be smart and you don't have to be dumb to know that half of the people that are coming over here are making problems basically because of the mar marijuana dispensary. Uh, yeah. And because the police is not here. That's the sheriff's not here. Right. What do I have to do to bring you back over here? I really want to get the police back over here. Thank you. Yeah, you have to or be your voice. Yeah. So you have to talk to one of those guys. What? Every Thursday, we're here. Every third Thursday of the month. And we have a public comment period. And your your voice is, is uh, welcome to be heard. And you're free to speak any every time you're here. That's it. I'll write it on the calendar. Because I really want to change. I don't want it to get bad. That's already bad. All right. Thank you. Greg. Yes. Do you guys, any of you, go to the the board meetings in Bakersfield? Uh, no, I don't. But I do uh, keep tabs on it by reading the, the minutes and reading the agenda of their meetings. To but I think what we need is somebody on the board that's going to voice at the board meeting. Right. Because the board will what gets a grease in the I thought. We need to have Roseman needs to have a voice in Baker. This is telling this guy something doesn't work. So yeah, because yeah. I got yeah, who's taking notes? Who's taking notes? We're the film rep for. I'm Josh Cooper. I'm the film rep for Josh Cooper. Josh Cooper. Josh Cooper. Josh Cooper. Josh Cooper. Josh Cooper. Josh Okay, that's okay. 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 Okay.
we may not be going to Bakersfield, and I can make an effort to be there. I can't be there all the time, but I can make an effort to be there from time to time. But at the same time, I'm in touch with uh, John Antonaros, which is uh, Chief of Staff and uh, Supervisor Scribner. And so the lines of communication are back and forth all the time. And they are listening to what we're saying here, and they are concerned about this community. That's why this board is here. It's because this is to hear your voices and to make sure that your concerns and your voices get heard down the hill. This teleconference is about to the one person, Zach. Zach's got five other people. Teleconference is available in Mojave, right? Of anything. Did you tell anyone that? Yes. You can actually go to Mojave and request in advance through his office to have it set up in teleconference from Mojave all the way to uh, Kern County Board of Supervisors meetings. So it's just like being there, but you're teleconferencing out of Mojave office. All I'm saying is got to go to the other five guys too because it's exactly. That's what I'm saying. It, it's right there at the meeting, right. so it's taken care of. Now why is that a Mojave guy here? People. So basically, what he's suggesting is maybe you guys get on the teleconference. <laughs> You guys get on the teleconference too. No, that's what I'm saying. He's saying our representatives here on the RMAC sure. need to take a more active role in the uh, supervisors' meetings and what he's trying to say. Well, Greg already said that we do talk to his chief of staff and to Zach and to Josh. And I'll go to Bakersfield anytime we got a situation that calls for it. I don't think we, I think we have a couple of them. Yeah. 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 Okay. Just, just for my own curiosity, are you guys paid to do this? No. 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 <laughs> okay, Rosemary Community Service District. Anybody here to make this report from them? Sure. My name is Olaf Lanskar. I'm the president of the Rosen Community Services District, uh, board of directors. Just one thing I want to talk to you about today. We are starting our strategic planning process. And one of the items that we're starting to strategically plan is parks and recreation centers in this community. We need your input. We need to figure out what direction we need to take with parks and recreation. In 1998, the community services district was given the power to do parks, but no, no revenue source. So we need to come up with a plan that's practical, that's executable, and it's affordable. And everybody's aware that, uh, or should be aware that the, the West Park pool is maintained by the Roseman Community Services District. Technically, we own the, the pool. And it's a very difficult thing to maintain and, and, and <coughs> pay for because it doesn't pay for itself. That's one of the things, obviously, we want to make sure we can continue on to do in the future. Other ideas, we really need your ideas. We need you to help plan. I know each of you is, is, has different uh, things you belong to. You might belong to the Roseman Union Football. You might belong to uh, the Community Watch. You might belong to the Roseman Youth and Soccer, that's like basketball, you talk about basketball. <laughs> uh, whatever you belong to, we do need your input. And, and figuring out, we, we heard, well, I got a chance to talk to the Chamber of Commerce tonight, but you know, what do you want in a community? What, what, what is affordable? What's something that's practical that we can put together that works for all of us? And we are continuing to have meetings uh, with the Board of Directors on the planning. We're meeting with Brent Ives, the former City Manager of Tracy, California and help get us direction on, on doing that. We hope to have a, uh, we are having another meeting in September, I believe it's September 8th, from 10 to 12 at the Rosemary Community Service District office. If you want the meetings at a different time or a different place, let us know. Uh, certainly, I think 10 to noon, we don't get a lot of people there, but obviously six or seven at night, we could. Uh, the, the number for the Rose Community Services District is 256 3411. 256 3411. And again, we appreciate all the input you can give us, all the help you can give us, and, and let us know how we can move forward. You know, in 2002, we faced a similar situation with the schools. Nobody knew what, how we're going to move forward. We, need, we never passed a bond for the schools. That time we passed a bond, uh, I was on the board at that time for, to build the West Park Elementary School. <coughs> to uh, get some new technology in the classrooms and to pay out debt that the, the school had encouraged to build to make the gap. Uh, building, they had built a lot of schools to make the part of participation that you didn't have the money to, we didn't have the money at that time to pass a bond, we didn't have the ability to pass a bond. 
So when we finally passed the bond in 2002, we took care of all that, and, and you've seen the school's done great things since then. So I uh, look forward to hearing from you. You, know, you can speak to me after the meeting or, or, or give, give me a call anytime at 256 3439. Yes, ma'am? I have a question about the street lights, because I don't know. Sure. Um, are you guys paying for the sections that voted no on the street lights? The inspections that voted no are not being paid for by us, no. There's no lights, right? Well, some of the lights are being removed by Southern California Edison, some are not. Okay, so the areas that voted yes, we have street lights. Yes. Okay, because I had read that the areas that voted no, you guys were going to subsidize it. No? The, only, the only place that they might be a carryover if they're, if they're in an area that's uh, a... Glendower, for example. Let's say freeway, somewhere that's a... Uh, Arterial road. Arterial road. That, that, that we do, your, your dollar a month pays for that regardless. Okay. So if it's an, ar if an arterial road, okay. so the areas that voted no, we're not. If they're not an arterial road, the lights come on. Then where oh. I read that was. Um, so then. Yeah. It's, it's 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 the Thanks. Yeah, we do street lighting, we do water, yeah. we do so sewer, and graffiti paint. Do you guys uh, make money on our street lights? We make money on it. It's a non. It's supposed to be a non-profit type thing. It's a, it's a zero sum game as far as that goes. No. All right. So yes, guys. Are you going to put it on our taxes, or is it going to go to the water? Yeah, the, the light street lights is on your taxes. Going to go to taxes. It's on your taxes. Always on your taxes. Put the sewage on there too. Yeah. Sewage is not on your taxes. Yeah. Yeah. You, pay that, you pay that monthly. Right now, it's about we dropped that to seven bucks a month. It's now about thirty. Well, if you put it on your taxes, you can claim it on your taxes, right? No. no. I'm not your CPA. You have to ask your CPA. Yeah. Yeah. September the eighth. Right, September 8th, we're intended to finish. Yeah. I've got a question. Um, probably shouldn't be an agenda item, but it doesn't matter. The street lights and improvements on Diamond Street are <coughs> paid for by one of the solar companies. The upkeep of that is being paid for by the business owners of Diamond Street. That's correct. Why is RCSD charging them somewhere between $1,000 and $1,200 a month for the water? That's absolutely insane. Well, I think that's a question you can ask our general manager. I don't think we're charging $1,000 well, for Diamond Street that's Water. That's what I'm getting from the uh, owner, uh, business owners. Group. Well, if they're using $1,000 worth of water a month, then they should, should, pay, they should pay for $1,000 worth of water. Probably it, most $50, $60. Who's well, in, sure who's in charge of the general manager over there? The, the, uh, I would definitely tell the general manager that you're concerned about the $1,000, and that's a rumor, but certainly we'll look at it. It's not a rumor. I got it from the uh, business owners. No, I know. If it's a thousand dollars that they accrued over a year, I can understand that. Well, it's per month. It's well, it, like I said, nobody gets a free ride. If they're using a thousand dollars, they're going to pay a thousand dollars. No, you guys, as RCSD board members, receive income, right? For yeah, we receive, we receive uh, uh, payment for meetings. Yes. Yes. Are there any other questions? Now, you had a question about water. You all know about the fact that the, the, the judge, I think it was in Sacramento, said that the level set by the state of chromium six at the lowering it from 50 parts per billion to 10 parts per billion is not is not allowed. They didn't they didn't uh, do a, a study on that. So it's back if, at 50 parts per billion, um, frozen water is a little less than that. At 10 parts per billion, I think we're like 12 or 13 parts per billion. So chromium levels, like I say, are acceptable. <coughs> So you guys, depending on how you look at it, so we add it all up. Our state levels, we, we mix water, we, we come, we get bring a blow to 10 parts of it. You don't have to do a bank. You don't have to do any kind of a bank. That's, that's, uh, we still need a plan for it, because this is the superior court decision. So we'll see how it goes with the What are we doing now? What are you going to do with the light? Uh, what do you do if you don't want the street lights off? Uh, 
uh, from our perspective, I'm just one board member, so I can't speak for the whole board. But my suggestion is if you get 50% of the people in the neighborhood to sign a petition saying they want the street lights back on, come to the board and tell us that. Well, it's not that. It's Why, so you can charge the lights? What you're going to charge is why they can't let you do the lights. Well, okay. if you're not interested in turning them back on, we can help you get that stuff. Wait, 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 wait. Five dollars on our tax case. Hold on. They got like eighty dollars. This isn't an RCMP meeting. Hold on, folks, 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 sir, sir. This is just for brief questions of the RCSD. There, you get a report. I understand that, but RCSD has meetings twice a month, and that's where, that's where you should be to where you're addressing the entire board where you can get the questions answered. He can't, he's not in a position to answer the questions, especially when it comes to money and finances, because he can't speak to the other board members. Syria, I'll talk to you after the meeting. Does that work? Okay. Okay, any other questions? No. First and third Tuesday, 7 p.m. is a general meeting. We just had one this week. We'll be meeting August 1st at 7 p.m. If you want to come August 1st or the next meeting. Is that on your website? It should be. Okay. And we have a website too. It's very well maintained. Thanks. All right, thank you. Uh, Roseman Foundation uh, just got a report that we will be having our first meeting, and uh, it's been we've been on hiatus for almost a year, and everybody. Uh, so we're having our first meeting to get geared up and get going moving forward uh, next week, and uh, so hopefully at our next meeting in August that I'll have a uh, be able to get a report on on uh, foundation. What is the foundation? It's a 501c3, and uh, we oh, okay. are raising money. It's, it's to raise money to help out parks and recreation in the community and other organizations. Uh, in the past, we have, one of the things that we've recently done was uh, we provided the security system for the Little League at their snack bar because it was getting broken into. They didn't have the money for it. Uh, we gave a thousand dollars for football helmets to the uh, Roseman Youth Football because they didn't have the money uh, to pay for the football helmets that they unexpectedly had to replace with virtually no moment's notice. Um, so, and that's our goal, and uh, and our opportunity is to try to help promote. Uh, youth activities and recreational activities for the youth. It's like Olaf said, uh, there, other than there is no funding in this community for park and recreation other than Glendower Park, which is owned by Kern County. And, you know, their Kern County Parks Department is just like the rest of their departments. They're hurting for money. So there's just not a lot of money to go around. And so where we can get for the 501c3, if we can get people to donate, that we can then disperse it out into the community where it's needed, then uh, everybody wins. And that's what the foundation's about. So with that, we'll move on to the Roseman uh, Chamber of Commerce. Good evening. My name is Terry Lansky. I'm the president of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm not going to take any questions. I'm going to go along on our agenda. But I'd like to update you. We are working on our event center. We're hoping to force back to the next week. Um, it's been a slow process, but we are working toward that goal. We did get events that's going to help us out to make some of the improvements we want to And also, we have a trade September Fest coming up September 23rd. It's going to be the 41st annual Armed Force Appreciation Day. So that's coming up. And hopefully, maybe the board can participate this year. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Roseman Youth Football and Cheer. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No report? I'll give uh, just a brief report. They're going to be a great season this year. They have, they're collecting the coaches, they're collecting the uh, players, and uh, they expect to come next meeting and introduce the program to everyone. So they're taking sign-ups right now. Great. All right. Thank you. 
the uh, Southern Kern Unified School District. Anybody here? I'll report on that too. Uh, they. John, you get around. Yeah, I do. They um, passed a budget this year, the end of June, of nearly forty million dollars, which is a great increase for Roseman. Um, the portable classrooms at West Park and Tropico are being installed to keep up with the growth. The uh, district has back with a good reputation and people are coming in from desert, from Lancaster, bringing their kids back because they can get college level course credit through the high school. And some kids, amazing, they cut two years off of college. And the final thing is August 5th, Saturday, is gonna be the official opening of the new elementary school and classes to start Monday morning. And uh, Bruns Belmont, I mean, yeah. Bruns Belmont is, as you see, scrambling around trying to make the deadline. August 7th, the classes start, what you're saying? Negative, no, August 9th, school August starts on Monday. Okay, August all right. <laughs> it may change even from that, too. So any other questions about the school district? Okay, let's move on to Antelope Valley Citizens for Responsible Use of Water. Mr. Scott, here by any chance? No. Nope. I don't see. Okay, Edwards Air Force Base. I think we're giving a presentation. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Ed Buckleton. I'm the Director of Public Affairs at Edwards Air Force Base, and I appreciate the board allowing me to speak. With me today is uh, Steve Zapka, call sign Zap, who is the new community engagement uh, chief, uh, relieving Dennis Schaffner, who recently retired last week. Yeah, yeah. So a little bit about, about myself. I've been in the position for about a year. Um, originally retired from the U.S. Navy after 26 years. Uh, former E-2 Hawkeye Naval Flight Officer in the backseat, and then 20 years as a Navy Public Affairs Officer, now Air Force Civilian Public Affairs Officer. So, uh, one of the things that's coming up, and uh, this is probably one of the biggest events that we've had in recent history, <laughs> is that this year is the 70th birthday of the U.S. Air Force. What makes this Animal Valley area special is that all the supersonic records known in the history up to 6.72 Mach by uh, Steve Knight were all done on it, which I think. So we're celebrating that with a big event. Um, and next slide. Would you Pete. So uh, today's agenda uh, for the next 10 minutes, we'll talk about my focus areas, the marketing calendar, and the concept of operations that we have signed up for this awesome event that we're trying to get the entire community involved. So our, our first and foremost uh, priority is STEM outreach with the elementary school, the high schools in the area. We're honoring the developmental test team to include Chuck Yeager, who may or may not be participating. He's 94 years old this year, so this could be the time that he's not actually in there. But we are looking at folks from Washington, D.C. to come out. Significant community involvement, meaning we're trying to get community leaders, as many folks in the community, out to Edwards Air Force Base, short of actually a big old air show. We're trying to get entertainment from the entertainment industry, uh, aerospace industry involvement. But first and foremost, for everyone that comes on board the base, we make this a cool, fun, and memorable experience for everybody. So for marketing, um, for those on social media that are active on that, we're using hashtag 70 SSF, uh, providing a lot of cool things. This is our website. Uh, uh, from now and through August, we're doing a lot of engagement with all local communities. We've already spoken to Lone Pine, Mojave. We're going to hit Lancaster Palmdale soon, and of course, Roseman which is near and dear to my heart because I come through the city every day coming into work. September, October is when we plan to release our uh, infographic and do a lot of significant media engagements for what all out a very cool event. So this is the planning calendar. Um, the first two weeks in October are pretty much uh, what we've got lined up. It's going to kick off with the uh, 3rd of October, which is the 50th anniversary of when Pete Knight I broke 6.72 Mach, which is still the, the world record for best, best men in the aircraft. Um, also, uh, we're having, for those of you that have access to the base, uh, we have our History Museum connecting open house. Uh, and the 13th of October is when our event takes place. Uh, for the most part, and the 14th of October is our 
run with history, which we'll talk about later. But during these two weeks also, we're going to do significant scam outreach in the local community to not only talk about potential careers in the, in the I know it was Air Force Base, but also engineering, and then uh, talk about uh, capabilities that we have on the base. So very quickly, the concept of operations. Um, we're going to have a team member with a family day where we're going to roll out pretty much every single aircraft that we have on our Air Force Base for everyone to see um, that have access to the base, unfortunately. Due to security posture, we can only allow those folks that only have base access to get there. So retirees, folks that currently work on the base, so on and so forth. We are conducting an anniversary ceremony around noon during the 11 o'clock news hour. Potentially, <coughs> we're for the most part going to have our four star General Paul Kowski come out. But we're also looking at the Chief of Staff of the Air Force, Secretary of the Air Force, come out. The uh, current NASA, arms, uh, NASA administrator is coming out with his entourage. Uh, and we'll be broadcasting that live too for those of you that can't access it. And then we have our birthday ball rescheduled to take place that day. On that Saturday, TV, our partner, is also going to broadcast it live uh, on Channel 23 and then out to their affiliates, 50 affiliates uh, nationwide. It's a kind of cool event. Just, this is just the early stages. Air Force Birthday Ball, for those of you that have access, um, again, we schedule an event that's looking uh, at the uh, evening of the 13th of October from 5 to midnight. Um, formal event. Um, Right now we're looking at, uh, like I said, the chief staff of the Air Force, senior and NASA administrator coming out um, with more of the same to celebrate 70 years of awesomeness in the Air Force. And as I mentioned before, we're celebrating the legacy at Edwards Air Force Base with all these records broken up at Edward, including Pete and I's 50th anniversary, 6.7 to Okay, this is the rough layout. One of the cool things is that we're looking at bringing an SR-71 in for uh, display and for taking pictures. And last but not least is the run with history, typically held during the spring time frame. Um, the gates will be open from 7 to 2 for folks to run either a 5K, 10K, or a half marathon. Um, there's the information there. And I'll provide the slides if you guys are interested. These are the routes and the dry lake bed. A lot of coolness and the ability to run by all these aircraft as well as on the historic dry lake bed. This is the half marathon route, more of the same with that. And these are the point of contacts. And if you have um, interest in participating or coming on the base, uh, that's my information there. If you're looking at actually doing something to showcase Roseman, uh, uh, Master Sergeant uh, Washington is there as well to, uh, to take that. With that said, <coughs> any questions for me? Yes, sir. Since it's the 70th anniversary of the United States Thunderbird, it's going to be there since it's such a big event. Uh, unfortunately, they will not be. It's not, it's not an airship. It's not an airship. So, so they'll still participate in the Fox Field Air Show, like they always yeah, do. But not for this particular event. They used to come to Amazon all the time, and this is a big event. Yeah. How come they're not here? This is not an airship. Because it's not an airship. It's not an airship. It's not an airship. The intent originally to roll this out was for the folks with just on Edwards Air Force Base to keep it low key. If we raise it to Thunderbird level, it would require a whole new dynamic, and more than likely our, our event would have been shut down. So I'm trying to keep it so that we can keep it all within the family, which includes Rosemary. Excuse me? You know, out of all that stuff you mentioned, the, the, the one thing that really impacts Rosemary the most is that flyover. Mm -hmm. So what day was that again, and about what time can they expect The 13th of October is sometime a lot after 11 o'clock. Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, which is also, which is also the 242nd birthday of the U.S. Navy. Be <laughs> <laughs> able to take care of business and, and fill all these great jobs. So that's that's what we're trying to do. There's, uh, if you go to the basis public website, there and, and start prowling around, you, you can see that there is a, an entry for a, the base has a STEM coordinator. Uh, Oh, so I can't remember the guy's name. Umberto. Yeah. Umberto Umberto. And if you call, contact his, his number, his email address is all there on the website. If you contact him, he can arrange for speakers to come out to, uh, to the schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have the tour guides that we have for the STEM tours, our engineers on the base. Yeah, real fast, I'll give it to you in a second. But yeah, I'm teaming with Umberto, and we're looking at some different ideas leading up to this event. Uh, similar to that cockpit thing, we're looking at the, we're exploring ideas of 
possibly doing that and beaming it live to schools and things like that. We're looking at all those opportunities to get kids interested uh, in, in this innovation and, and what we do at Edwards and the Air Force in general. Yes, sir. only at these schools. Uh, a friend of mine has a rocketry club. Oh, no, that's good too. Yeah, and he, he hosts workshops at South Sea. got a huge facility right. where they build rockets and he's going for this next level of rocketry and all that stuff. Um, would that be something that he, you guys could come in and give a presentation when he's doing one of his workshops? Or I mean, does yeah, it have to be a... That, that's all feasible. Um, I'll uh, leave my card around. Or, he's and he's done up. that before. Yeah, okay, he's done well, that before. I'll pass on the information to get a hold of America with my buddy and then we'll see how it goes from there. Right, and, th and that'll work fine. And we also do general public tours. Uh, so I'm in charge of all the tours on base. So if anybody ever wants to come on a tour of Edwards, uh, you can get a hold of us on our base website. It has all the, uh, you know, the information there to take public, you know, to take the general public tours. And we also do large group tours. If you have a, a large group, 15 or more, we can fit you into our schedule. You know, so that's great because it's it's you guys that need to see what's going on right next door. Because a lot of people have, you know, forget about uh, Edwards and and the huge economic impact it brings to the local area. Yes. I don't. I work for all of you. See, Dennis, you just thought you retired. It didn't happen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the best tour guide they ever had just recently retired. <laughs> <laughs> as humble as I can stay in. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I was just curious, what age group are you focusing on to start the STEM program? Because I know it's starting in the schools, but is it 50? Some of the stuff we're looking at, uh, you know, there's, what are we doing, space? What's the new space thing we're looking at? Yes, so, so to that point really quickly, uh, have you all heard about the, uh, the new museum that they're looking at groundbreaking here? Yes. Um, so it turns out that uh, the uh, Flight Test Historical Foundation is looking at doing the groundbreaking. Originally it was going to be October, it's going to be in the springtime frame. But as part of that, they are going to be uh, working with uh, Washington, D.C. to establish that museum to be a star base. Right now the only other star base I'm aware of is in Los Alamitos. And there's a backlog, so we're looking at making that a star base, meaning that they will do outreach with uh, fifth graders, which is apparently the STEM starting point. And then every week, we cycle new uh, new schools coming through that. So that's going to be a huge boon, not only for the STEM community, but for the aerospace valley in general. Right, right now, it's on base. But when they do the groundbreaking, it's going to be where uh, uh, Century, Century Circle is, over here on the West Gate, which is... So you won't have to go past the garden to get to it. Yeah, so everyone will have access and it will probably increase the traffic flow to come up with the rain. <laughs> and, and, and stay tuned with the, with the museum. There's all kinds of exciting things uh, well beyond that with more more exciting STEM stuff going on too because that's what it's going to be. It's, it's going to be a huge facility dealing with that, not just focusing on fifth graders with the star base and what have you, but we're also going to uh, have the Society of Experimental Test Pilots teaching classes there to youth to get them involved in that. There's all kinds of great things going to happen. So stay, stay in touch with us. Check our website on base for all the uh, latest news and what have you. Uh, we don't have a newspaper anymore, but that's all electronic, so that's even better for you guys because you don't have to get the hard paper. You can go online and, ch and check out all the news and what have you. We also have a Facebook page as well that has a lot of history stuff. For any aviation buffs, check into our Facebook page, and you can see what happened in history and on, on this day uh, every day of the week. So it's pretty awesome stuff we get going. So just out of curiosity, in October, if we set up a one-day uh, tour for folks that live in Lozman, any of you be interested in this thing? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Right now we don't, we tend to do not have any tours, but I would say that's special for the communities in local areas, especially the folks that don't necessarily get to come to the basic Can I make a suggestion yes, with that? Yes. That you work with the school district so they can send out flyers for all the parents and students? Okay. Flyers. That sounds good because we're, we're talking to Desert High School on the base, but uh, certainly we definitely want to talk to parents and students. So, yes, ma'am. Would you uh, did you work with like PTA as well, like like a school PTA? Did we do that all the time yeah. with okay. other schools. So yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. but, exactly. Yeah, that's me. Anything else? Thank God. All right. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. This is part of it. Yeah. Okay. So again, my name is Josh Foster. Field Director to Supervisor Zach Scribner. I just want to introduce our new. Administrative Officer Ryan Alsop. Oh, thanks. Has experience from Sacramento, Washington, D.C., and his recent position was as Assistant CEO of Los Angeles County. We're actually very fortunate to have him as a dedication and experience here in Fern County. And I open the floor to you, Mr. Alsop. Thank you, John. I appreciate it.
sheriff will probably go real quick. She's got a quick two minutes. <laughs> okay, but before we do that, the other I was pointing to is the assemblyman's office. You had, you had a report? I'll, wait, I'll let them both go. That's no. totally fine. I'll wait. I'll wait. Okay, so in that case, then we will move on to item one presentation by Kern County uh, Sheriff's Crime Hi, I'm Nobi. I'm from the Crime Prevention Unit at the Sheriff's Office. I don't know if you knew that we had that unit at the Sheriff's Office. We cover the whole county, but we are here for you. I've heard all of your concerns, and we are concerned about it too. And crime prevention means to prevent crime and our, all of our unit is meant for you to take advantage of our services and what we do is we come out and we help you as far as neighborhood watch we come out and talk to kids at the schools about different topics like bullying and dating violence we talk to community groups about um, domestic violence things that affect your community so um, I just wanted to let you know that you have a unit that is very interested in your community and we would love to come out and share our presentations. We have over 20 presentations and we passed out brochures. Our number is on there and so if you are interested, we'd like to talk to you, especially Neighborhood Watch, because that is how you as citizens can band together and eliminate crime well, it's not able to, you can't eliminate it, but you can displace it. So if you want it to go somewhere else, Neighborhood Watch is a good way for you to displace it somewhere else. And so we have Business Watch also. If you're interested in any of those, we are very interested. We'll come out to Rosemont. <coughs> Whatever um, you're interested in, give us a call and we'll come out. Okay, thank you for your attention. I made it or convinced it really quick. <laughs> how do you start a neighborhood watch yes. all you need to do is talk to your neighbors if you have uh, the neighbors that you can see and can be seen by you um, talk to them if you want to get a group together call us we'll come out and we'll give you the training um, we'll talk to you about um, target harming your own home setting up your neighborhood watch we're on Facebook we're on next door so if you want to contact us just give us a call we'll come out and help you Okay, thank you very much. I wanted to say that uh, Sergeant Anton is the one that set this up, and uh, we talked about it uh, several months ago, about getting it put together, and they're not going to be strangers to our, our meetings. They're going to be out here on a regular basis. They're going to be giving us pointers and ideas to make our community better. And if you take a moment to look at the brochures, you see the programs they offer, mm -hmm. and they can come out here and give you all valuable tips on answering your questions on how to make your neighborhood better. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Russ Williams from the Seminole office. Um, real quickly, uh, the neighborhood watch thing, seen many neighborhoods really come around from their red watch. I really recommend it um, tremendously. So you start watching your neighbor, you start, and they start watching you, it makes a big difference. And you just to get involved with that. Um, but, uh, you know, it says nothing to do with this. A thousand years ago, I was riding in a car with uh, Pete Knight. We were driving around neighborhoods and such. We're down Sierra Highway about 40 miles an hour. And he was driving Chevy Citation. And he was driving, and I'm sitting beside him. I look over at him and I go, This is the best the fastest man on earth could do. <laughs> and he looks at her and goes, Shut up. Sierra Highway at 45 miles an hour. Can I talk pot? Am I allowed to talk pot for a second? Oh, excuse me. Sure. This will marijuana dispensaries. Cannabis. You represent a single one. You know, fortunately, in January, I, I, number one, first off, I, I really believe in the Los Angeles County thing. I've been just and Josh about uh, corporate areas are not allowed to have dispensaries. I like that. I don't know why. I, sometimes it should be right into this county as well, or county as well. 
Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's good for them. As of January, there are a number of things that's going to really give the uh, law enforcement, Highway Patrol, and the sheriffs a little more teeth um, towards this. Uh, number one is you have to have state licensing at that point on January 1st to have a pot dispensary, um, and it, which means you have to pass the criteria and things to, to get that. If you don't have that, then you're breaking the law. You can be, uh, and, and it's a much higher penalty. Is that the medical or medical? The dispensary. Um, so it's, that, that's kind of a good thing. Um, the second one that I think is being, I mentioned this one time before, I think, was uh, that the transportation of it will no longer be, it could be treated as alcohol. It has to be in the trunk of the car. If it's not in the trunk of the car, it has to be in a sealed container inside the car. Um, that's going to really open up a lot more opportunities for enforcement as well. So you're not going to have the folks sitting on the side of the street. I'm oh, sorry. You're not going to have the people on the side of the street, you know, get loaded and then driving away. Yeah. I know. But there's more, there's more chances. There's more chances of being in enforcement. So that's good. But yes, you. Will. You've got to have the cops first. Hmm? You've got to have the cops first. <laughs> And so where is the enforcement on the dispensary, the so-called dispensaries? That's not here yet, January 1st. Wow, well, this is the trial <laughs> year. I've sat here and watched this whole world. So no, 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 no. I'm saying the laws take care of January 1st, 2018. Now that it's kind of legal. So until then, it's free for all. Is that what we're saying? Yes. 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 My law lives. So this is disgusting. I, you know, my, the my, my wife is walking, you know, she, she goes and walks, and she's found, you know, dispensary canisters on the ground, half full of pot. I found one on Friday just, a, just this last week. Is it still on the ground? With the cap says, do not dispose. This, this shit is, you know. Oh, I know. Well, that's that's our, really our community, community, our children can have access to this crap. Where is the enforcement? That's all I'm asking. It's a concerned citizen in this community. Where is the enforcement of a, such a small community of 22 pot dispensaries? We are the pot capital of Southern California. So what the hell is going on here? And why did they put it here without us even knowing? Where is that the Where's the regulation? That's the reason why I came to this meeting. I want to know what's going on with these dispensaries. We have citizens that pay taxes here. That would be a lot of by pot shops. Is there any way to have, oh, I don't know, an honest business owner who pays their taxes and pay, gives to the community versus a pot shop who, I mean, I think 16? Six, 22. 20. 20. 20. That, that sounds absolutely asinine. I, I've never heard of any one business of any kind being 20 in one area, and there's nothing we can do about it, essentially, right? Next, next, I mean, who is allowing this to happen to us? Why? That's what we want to know. I don't give a about Bakersfield. I want to know why these dispensaries are in my neighborhood like this. Where's that? And I want answers. Okay, because I do too. I do too. And this is what we're going to get answers to this. Because I don't know why either. What can we do to get rid of them? I'm going to explain what they're going to do here in a minute. So, no, well, can we pick them? I'm going to pass it over to the county because it feels ready to talk right now. Because in the capital, which is where I'm, I work at mostly, up in Sacramento, um, you know, I'm dealing with, we are dealing with, a law that was passed by you guys and me. Uh huh. I know. I know. Why are the county people looking at that? I'm a Californian, and you are Californians. So Californians vote for the county. Why are the people looking at that? 
That being said, that argument is a false argument no. because it's not California, California can vote to legalize cocaine, it still don't make it legal. Absolutely. California can vote to legalize marijuana, yes. but it's still a schedule. Because it's still a federal, federal law. law. Yes. Yes. So yeah, California can say we're going to be a sanctuary state and allow any idiot across the border to be, you know, to stay on track. Laws. But they don't have the authority to pass laws like that. To stay on track. What we're trying to do, well, at least we'll, uh, a limited number of us have been in my laws, is trying to help regulate it. He knows he can't change it. It's not going to change. But we also have seen examples in Colorado, I'll use that as an example, where they just legalized it, didn't regulate it. And they're a, they're a mess. It's just a well, mess. Well, Nevada just legalized it and overregulated it, and it's a mess. And it will be too. But the only thing we can do for our zone, for my boss's part, is try to regulate it. And he's actually had a few things signed by the governor, which surprised Dickens out of me, because he's not from the same party. That the, that okay, well, so, I'm going to... I've got a question for him. Hold on, this is a question. We're going to have a time for the questions. I just wanted to give the opportunity for the uh, representative of our assemblyman to get up and speak to the, the crowd for a moment. Please understand that... that but kind of we have up. somebody yes. here that is going to be able to answer questions. We'll get to the agenda where you'll be able to ask questions. Uh, he can't answer the questions for Kern County. He can just tell you what's going on with the state. The state of California, the voters of this state passed the law. Whether you agree with it or not, they passed the law. But we're dealing with it on a county level. We've got items to discuss. We have letters here that are going, going out. And we will get to those this evening, but if we stand here and keep asking questions, we're not going to get anywhere. Yes, ma'am. Mine has to do with the whole entire state of California. Why is it that other counties are able to prohibit this from happening in their counties, but Kern County is not doing anything about it? No, LA County does not have anything to do with it. Little Rock, unincorporated areas do out. No, they don't. Can't 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 still there. Excuse me. Can I pass? Can I, can I, can I turn it over to Gerald real quick, uh, uh, Director uh, right. Morris, to answer this? City of Riverside versus the Inland Empire Patient Self and Welfare set, uh, Centers, 56 California 4, 729. The California Supreme Court held that the Compassionate Use Act and the Marijuana Program Act neither expressively or implicitly limit the inherent authority of the local jurisdiction by its own ordinances to regulate the use of the land. So it's completely and totally on the county. They're not. Okay. Right. One, one I mean, more question for our assemblyman. I have a question for the Okay, here we go. One more answer. question. There's an answer for something. Jake's second answer. That's all right. Go ahead. You don't want to hear from the building. Okay. So let's, I'm Lorelei Ovid, I've lived here for 33 years, I'm the Planning and Natural Resources Director, okay? So, these things that are being said are not accurate, and you have legitimate concerns. We all have legitimate concerns, so I want to be clear. The county did try to ban it, and because a citizens group came forward and sued us, our ban was overturned. And now we have to spend $350,000 of taxpayer money to do an environmental impact report. <coughs> we have now done. It's going to be out next week. So the county has banned it. 19 of those are illegal. They just opened up. And we are doing everything. On January 1st, we can call on the state to help us. But no offense, up until now, the state has provided nothing in regards to law enforcement or sanctions or anything else. It's all been on the county general fund, which is your property taxes, and on the sheriff. And that's been what we've been doing. And we have been struggling along with you. I live here too. And I, so I just want to be clear. It is not true that we've done nothing. We have. It just hasn't worked because the courts overturned it over and over and over again. We have gone to court. We had uh, a couple of a couple of months ago, six or seven months ago, we had county council here. We have a new county council, and she talked about how 
The liberal Judge Lampe refused to enforce an injunction. We literally got injunctions saying you have to close down. <clears throat> they didn't close down. We went to the courts and the courts said, yeah, well, you know, it's on appeal. So we have a different plan. We're not going to reveal to you what that plan is because it's a criminal plan. It has a task force. Give us another week or so and you will see some action. But we are not going to reveal here today you know, what that is since this is a small community. And then, you know, and, right. and, and so, so part of the problems has been the courts. And then on January 1st, we will get the state's help. Now, in this EIR, that's coming out, it will be, you know, we'll get a copy here, and then there's gonna be, it's gonna go to the Planning Commission, and then it'll go to the board in October. There are two options. Ban countywide all commercial activities, or regulate them. And there is a cost for both of those sides. However, in the regulatory side, there would not be dispensaries in Rosamond, unless they got conditional use permits, and they would be limited to two. And if they didn't get a conditional use permit, and this community can certainly show up at a planning commission, there would be none. On the regulatory side, it produces money that we can use to enforce against them. Otherwise, it comes out of the general fund, which he's going to talk about in a minute and tell you the kind of bad shape we're in, so that he can't give <coughs> us 20 deputies, which would cost us a million dollars a year. So I want you to keep an open mind on the regulatory, knowing that your community could regulate it out. They may be in the rest of the community, but they would produce money for the county. that could then be used in this community. So I'm being totally straight with you. Thank you. And you know I didn't in intend to, but you know you all have That's legitimate concerns. I am just exactly what anyone with. Yeah. There's a difference between two and 20 in this small community. Well, there's a difference between two that have to follow the same rules as a dry cleaner, two that have to follow the same rules yes. as, as the hotels. Yes. They, are they are not following any of the rules, most, most of them. And for a legitimate business person, that hurts even worse. Driving out. We are so overregulated in California. And here we have someone who's making Trust me, probably 14 times more than poor Mr. Patel over here. And yet, they don't have to, yeah, well, that was my point, right? <laughs> that was my point. And yet, they don't, and they aren't doing anything. They're not paying taxes. They're not paying property taxes. They don't have the right ventilation system. They aren't paying for security. And we don't know what's in their edibles. If these edibles are for sick people, they probably have an E. coli in them, is what public health said. Now, to the state's credit, they are putting together a massive regulatory program. It's actually very impressive and very strict. Public health is doing edibles, Bureau of Consumer Affairs, the medical is, it, it is a regulatory. But up until now, we've had no help. So there's no way to shut them down. Yeah, we, we, there is a way to shut them down, and we are going to do that. Yes, we are working on that right now. Okay? And then, if, if, and then uh, so, the CEO, don't tell anybody. I am the director of planning and natural resources, but I've lived in Rosemont for 30 years. Current county director of planning. Current county. For the whole county. For the whole county. So, and you know, I'm more than happy to push this. But by the way, LA County passed, LA County didn't ban it in every unincorporated so community know. either. So, but they gave them the, the choices. Well, we, so we are there. We had to do this crazy environmental impact report because the court said so. So that's what we've been working on. We've got it now, it's going to come out. The Board of Supervisors will decide in October. We want something in place before January 1st, 2018. Whichever direction we go, because the way it works in Sacramento on January 1st is they ask the local county, do you have something that bans it in your ordinance or don't you? And if you don't, then they get to say what happens. Okay. The Board of Supervisors does not want that to happen, so they made this referral. So I am just reflecting your passion because I want the accurate information. You all are smart people, and but I want to make sure you have the accurate information. Of you. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> We've been struggling, and there's nothing worse than government saying, "Hey, I'm working on it." So I just wanted to tell you that we 
We're doing something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to take a couple questions before Ryan talks. Go ahead. I have one quick question. Um, you said they're doing an environmental impact report. Right. Has there actually been somebody that is like standing outside them because her aunt owns dry cleaner. My daughter works there, and they are getting headaches and nauseous by the right, smell. Right. Exactly. We had a ventilation issue. That's yeah. correct. We have the same issue up in Bakersfield with a pet grooming. The poor woman, her company, right, going out of business because you know the poodles all smell like cannabis. <laughs> so uh, yes, yeah, so <laughs> those are the impacts. Yeah, we're also looking at the impacts on public services. So yes. Kind of on the same lines. Whether it be at the county or at the Sacramento level with these regulations, has it been discussed limiting location? Because that's that's my biggest problem yeah, with them so is the there's businesses here in Rosamond that are connected to these hot shops and they're losing customers because yeah, people so, can't deal with the smell. So, yeah. so the regulatory side, if we did that, uh, has only certain kinds of zoning. More importantly, the state is saying a thousand feet from a school, and I'm proposing a half a mile radius from a school, a park, or a youth center. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, so yes, we can we can regulate. But the important part is that conditional use permit. The conditional use permit is discretionary, and it goes. Let's go with planning. Do we have any idea? You know, Twenty pot shops is kind of an arbitrary. Do we have any idea of public record of how many pounds or tons? Or no, we do not. We have no record of that. It's a cash business. Yes. Can you use the same laws that they use to get rid of smoking? Yes. <coughs> because yes, the employee be shouldn't have to be so, in a place if they don't want to smoke. Yeah, not, and so, that's basically how they did it. The use of people should not have to be right. around that environment. In January 1st, the state says you can't smoke cannabis, either medicinal or adult use, in public unless the city or county allows that. We would not allow that. Yeah. We will also be bringing a ban in parks. What about okay. backyard? And so you can't smoke January 1st. It will still be allowed for personal use. The personal use means in your house. Not outside, right? Not, not outside. Because unless the county says you can do it outside, which we're not recommending. I don't see that happening. And you can't do it on a patio of a restaurant. And we're also not going to be recommending that we have establishments like you can't have it where there's alcohol, but in LA they're taught in Colorado they have like lounges where you have music and you can do it. I'm not recommending we allow those either. Okay? And they can grow six plants but they have to be inside their house. And they also, if they're outside, they can't be visible from a public street if they grow them. So this is a complicated uh, subject. I look forward, I'm more than happy to come back to the map. Because the EIR will be out next week, but we have to come back and kind of give you more of the here's what happens if you ban it, and here's the task force. And, you know, be more than happy to get on the agenda to do that. You can put me up on the, the agenda. So, sorry. <laughs> Uh, in, in Rosamond, and a lot of time driving around that uh, 
Miracle Mile over there, or whatever, <laughs> whatever you're calling it. Green Mile. Mile. Green Mile. Green Mile. Green Mile. It is Green Mile. It's all neon green. looks like Vegas. Uh, it's eye popping. It, it's it's eye popping, and it's egregious. And I would hate, I would absolutely hate if that were happening uh, where I live. Uh, and I just moved to Bakersfield. I, I've lived in Laguna Niguel for 20 years. I was born and raised in Kern County. Uh, I moved away when I was in my early 20s. Just a quick background real quick. I got three kids. I'm in Bakersfield. I would hate it if I lived anywhere close to uh, something like that. So I get it. And I get all the problems associated with it. And I hear you. And we hear you. I can tell you that we are having very high level, serious meetings on the subject. And she uh, hinted toward, or more than hinted toward, <laughs> what the end goal is. Um, we don't want to talk a lot about it, but please trust us. Um, I'm not going to lie to you folks. A couple more days. Yeah, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to lie to you folks, and I, I know I'm dressed in a suit, and I don't see that. I didn't, you know, I'm not some slick talker. Uh, I tell it like it is. I'm not going to lie to you. I know you guys don't know me at all, uh, but I, I'll earn that with you, uh, the relationship that I'll build with, with this community, and, uh, and if I'm, if I'm uh, wrong about that, you can, you can call me out on it. Uh, I plan to try and come to some of these meetings. Uh, in fact, I'll try to come to them all. Uh, I got to drive, uh, just like you have to drive the other way, and, uh, but uh, I, I'm going to make an effort to do that, and I'll let the, I'll tell, tell you folks that I'm, I'm planning on doing it. Okay, so I'm the CAO. The CAO manages the budget. Uh, it's the board's senior staff person. Uh, it's for the whole county, not just one board district. I deal with the whole county. Um, I don't know how much you want me to get into the budget, but we have a budget deficit. Uh, it is shrinking. We are spending less money. We're trying to be smart about how we spend less money. We're making some structural reform. We're doing some things to dig out of the fiscal hole that we're in. Uh, as it started at 63 million, we're at 20 million now. Mm. Half is on the fire side, wow. and so we are making headway. Um, we have to make adjustments that are year over year cost savings, as opposed to just one time savings. And if your business owners in here, you understand that one time savings is different than finding structural savings every single year. So that's my goal. We are using $12 million less this year out of our county reserves than we were planning to use this time last year. $12 million less. Uh, deficit has been cut by about 50%. So we're going to keep our nose to the grindstone. We're getting helped out. A little bit of luck with the economy. We're getting a little more uh, tax revenue coming in. But the plan is to dig, dig out of the hole, right, and, it's, and bridge to a better time where we right-size the county, and I say that in the most positive term. It's not cutting, taking a meat axe to people or laying people off. We've not laid anybody off, and we've done very limited, uh, if, if any, uh, service, service level impacts, cuts to services. Uh, so that's good news, um, but we are, uh, one of the big things is with the fire department, you may hear some news about the fire department. There's nobody here, but I guess I'll speak for them since they're not here. Uh, they have a they have a big budget deficit. They got an eight and a half million dollar budget deficit, and it is a giant suck on the general fund because we have to bail them out. We have to bail that fund out unless there's savings found. And my job is working with the fire unit to try and find some savings, and it's not easy. Uh, you may read things in the paper. Uh, you may see things on TV. They're all good guys. They're all heroes. I like them all. I had a beer the other night with the president. These guys are they're all great guys. But it's my job to try and figure out a way to get them to uh, to get them healthy and to do it so that your the services that are they're all providing you here in Roseman are impacted. We're doing an operational analysis of the fire department. It's the first time it's ever been done in Kern County. And we're really taking a deep dive, looking at uh, you know every aspect of the fire department's operations in order to find, in order to give us some options to help us find some cost savings to again make them healthy and in return make the general fund healthy. I, I do want to say a few things about law enforcement. Um, 
uh, I, I have, I'm from, I have, we're a law enforcement family. My first wife's husband was killed in the line of duty in 96 in Bakersfield, a CHP officer. His two-year-old daughter is my 24-year-old daughter now, but we are all about law enforcement in my family. And uh, that's something that I carry with me. It is the most important thing a county does. The most important thing, and I have said numerous times in public when I go talk to people all over the county, uh, or if I talk to TV stations, I am very upfront about it. If public safety is a priority, and it will be a priority even in these budget times that are tight. So we have recommended a budget to the Board of Supervisors just recently, they'll vote on it in August. The budget is a public safety budget. Every, the Sheriff's Department, the Sheriff and I are in lockstep. Uh, it's giving him an additional academy. They have an academy going on now. We're going to fund an additional academy to get more officers out to academies and onto the streets. Uh, and we are, uh, we've done some other things in the budget to help alleviate pressure on the Sheriff uh, so that he can take more of his funds and funnel it out to his deputies and to his patrols and to communities. So we're working on that. We're doing what we can. I can tell you, when I got in the car with Ramos, downtown Bakersfield, and we hauled out here, we went into Tehachapi, we got a call from Rosamond, some drunk guy somewhere outside. Uh, so we take off from Tehachapi to come to Rosamond. Meanwhile, there was, a, there was an armed robbery that particular day, and the, the, the guy, the deputy that was on that armed robbery was tied up doing paperwork, right, Sergeant? They, 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 those guys were taken off the street in effect because they've got they they they've done a good job but they're not on the street anymore they're on duty so you're down a sheriff or maybe even two mm -hmm. so we're rushing out to Rosamond hauling uh, I don't even know what that road is between the hash the side street the road <laughs> <laughs> I got me like a semi truck that's worse <laughs> but uh, we were hauling on that came to Rosamond and uh, by the time we got to Rosamond uh, hall ambulance had responded and did whatever, and then we get another call at Edwards Air Force Base. So we literally went to Hatchapi, Rosalind, went onto the base, there was some guy on methamphetamine and taking a walk out in the middle there. We had to go there. That takes Ramos. That takes Ramos off, right? Rosalind Streets. And, uh, he's on the base. He's dealing with nice young men and women, real sharp. We should recruit some of those uh, those uh, Air Force people for <laughs> police. But there's like eight of them. They've got all the best stuff, all the best cars. They're all like, you know, they got all the guns everywhere, real sharp. There's like eight of them. And eight, Ramos gets called from here to go out and manage a problem on Edwards Air Force Base. That I, frankly, I, maybe I think Edwards thought of them handling that, right? Yeah. Um, so then we arrest that guy. And then we drive to Mojave to stick him in a cell in Mojave. And then that takes Ramos. Ramos is out of service because he's got to go do that. And then on top of it all, you've got these uh, people that have, uh, 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 what's the thing where you get a, you don't like some your ex-husband and you. My, my head. But you get stuff like that, where Ramos has to escort somebody to a house, and we walk into the house and we do all that. He's off the streets. He's not patrolling for drunk drivers and you know burglary. Burglary, exactly. Right. All, so the, all is the rest of that. It is a problem. Yeah, it's a it's a problem, and we know it. The sheriff knows it. The board of supervisors, all five of them, know it. Uh, we have talked about it in, in open public session, and our priority is to do what it takes to make the sheriff successful in managing his operation. And that's all I can tell you, because I don't have much to show for it today. I'm new here. Um, I'm delivering a budget that I think put, puts them uh, in that space and towards that goal. I think the sheriff will tell you that. We're working on it. Public safety is a priority. Uh, but the sergeant, you know, these guys, they're not, they're not, you know, they're not even thinking about money. They just get in their car and they run to a call and they're just, you know, they're doing their job. So just keep that in mind. Could you share a little yeah. bit about the structure of the budget and the revenue based on ag and oil so that they understand? 
We understand the price of oil and everything went yeah. down. Okay. That was a tremendous drain on our county since it's like the, okay. one of the huge. Yeah, so why don't we just go to questions? But, but, but yeah. also, you know, we demand a lot of our law enforcement. And I don't know if this has been brought to attention, or idea has been brought up before. But we're all demanding more law enforcement. How many of us in this room are willing to pay a little bit more in taxes to fund our sheriff's department? How much is all the enforcement? Not their yeah. job. Yeah. 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 You're paying two hundred eighty thousand dollars for a supervisor that doesn't even come to meetings to address his constituents. But what I'm saying is, the actual reality is, our sheriff's department is unresponsive, and we're asking for whatever we need. I don't know. Could it not be proposed to be put on the ballot as a security? Or safety tax to fund the sheriff. Yeah, be like a gas you, should, you should call the president of the Kern Law Enforcement uh, Officers Association. His name is Dave Kessler. Uh -huh. He's the president. You should talk to him about that idea. So, so when does he get ten officers at least in this budget? He's not going to get ten officers in this budget. Um, we are working on a. We are trying to get the county's general fund healthy. The sheriff's department relies largely on the general fund. It is in a $20 million structural deficit. It was 63 a year and a half ago. So uh, we're doing what we can with what we have, and I'm telling you that public safety is a priority, but we're trying to dig out, maintain a priority public safety focus. Uh, but uh, we'll be working, I just talked to the sheriff today, and we, we're already talking about a group getting together with attorneys, with the sheriff's office, uh, my office, to figure out a way uh, to do a better job recruiting and retaining our deputies. We're hiring our deputies. They're going through, uh, they're going through their academies, and uh, a lot of them leave. Uh, they're not getting paid what other departments are getting paid. Some other departments do signing bonuses, uh, and they go there, or they come on and they work a little bit of time, and then they bail. We got to fix that. We got to figure out a way. And it's not hard. There's some low-lying fruit, I think, that's available there. Uh, but uh, there may be some longer-term things. But we're working on that right now. We're having active discussions about that, and that all results in a, a better efficacy <coughs> at the street level from our law enforcement uh, guys. But it's not lost on us. It, it, you're, you're, they're understaffed out here. They're running all. They, they tell us. They tell us. And uh, so we, we get it, and it's something that we're working on. And I know it's something Supervisor Scribner's working on as well. I mean, he's talked about it publicly. I sit and listen to Kernville at the meetings get the money from Parks and Recreation because the people were there screaming. From Fraser Park getting the money because they were there screaming. That's those meetings. But you got to go to Bakersfield. And so that's why I ask about the board. So we might want to get people on the board that could be at those meetings because when they go and vote at those meetings, Zach could be there and Zach wants to do this for his second district. But the other guys, they don't want it for their district and, they, and so it's one guy against five to take the money. So if you're constituents are there backing you up to make that vote and the other supervisors hear it, it makes a difference. Rotate. Yep. And so, Roseman, yeah, just like my dad, driving over there when I was a little kid trying to get money for Little League, where you're talking about giving money to the snack bar thing, but it's totally crazy that the snack, Little League snack bar has to take pay a, a fee to the Parks and Recreation to use that little square building to sell snacks out of it, if you can believe that. Mm -hmm. Not they take that. money from those kids. We also have to maintain the fields most of the year. So, I mean, when you guys, when you hear what you got to do, and then you're all paying tax money, and it's not coming back, you're just tired of paying a little bit more. Yeah, it would be easy to say, if we passed a tax bill that it was only for sheriffs for Roseman, People would probably do that, but there's some way that it always gets funneled off and goes someplace. <laughs> but you know, the value of the dollar in the last decade or so has been decreased by 13 trillion dollars in borrowing 
and the printing of an extra four trillion dollars by our federal government. Why do you think it costs five dollars for a gallon of milk? Labor, right? Labor, 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 material, labor, material. Everything is more expensive, but our property taxes are locked in with Prop 13. Everything's on a percentage. The houses in the old day were twenty-four thousand. I could build a house for twenty-four thousand. Now it costs two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars to build a house. So that doesn't work. It's all percentages, and it goes like this. They all go the same. Don't let them pull. Let you think that. The uh, the. Yeah, Prop 13 uh, changed things. There is not a house here that's still on Prop 13. They've been sold and gone off of Prop yeah, 13. Yeah, I think yeah, he makes a good point. He makes a good point. I'll just say that you know all that money goes into the general fund. Right, right. And then we've got to pay. We got to put the restroom into the park. We've got to pay for some extra uh, sheriffs, deputies. Uh, we've got to pay for a, uh, a library. Uh, there, there are, yeah, there are, there's competition for that money, and when uh, when the budget's tight, it's even worse. So yeah, I mean, you, you said that your uh, your money goes to places. It certainly does. Um, and it, roads are roads you want it here. Yeah, road, roads are. Uh, things are looking up for the roads. Uh, Where? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know they, they, uh, the the legislature. Uh, uh, you might have all read about it. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, they're, they're getting there's some more revenue coming in uh, for roads and. Uh, um, so let me let me. Uh, let me uh, I'd like to remind you the water is correct. The water is correct. We are so far from the seat of Bakersfield. Yeah. And unless we go there, represent yeah, ourselves. We go. are the squeaky wheel gets the wheel. I've dealt with uh, his office before. And it was only till I just kept repeatedly on to them about, hey, this needs to be fixed. And, he, and finally, fifth or sixth time, I think they got tired of hearing from me, but they just fixed it. So yeah, they get, yeah, you've got to be that them. persistent. I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, yeah, persistence is key. Sir, I, I, uh, that bathroom, I would say talk to uh, Jack's office about it. I already have. Have you? <laughs> yeah. So I'll talk to so I'll so the, the last record did it the same. Oh, okay. So it's not our part. I've so Little League has been over. in touch with you guys. No, no, no. Plenty. It's the county park. It's the county park. Yeah. 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 Only county park we got. So I will talk. Yeah. I will yeah. go back and, with Josh and I will talk to yeah. the yeah. 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 Because it was approved in about 15 years ago. Were there lights? No, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I just have one thing to say. You're talking about the law. Enforcement um, and the budget and everything that you have here. One of the busiest built businesses in this town is Carl's Hardware's gun shop. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You go into that store any given time of day that their gun short gun shop is open, and there is a line out the door. People arming themselves, people getting their concealed carry permits. This town is probably, I would say, I work for a lot of people in this town. On a daily basis, I'm in contact with a majority of the people in this town. I would say that there's at least half, if not more, is carrying at any given time. And it's gotten to the point now with the loss, right? Good. Well, thankfully our sheriff is all for it and he pushes it and he likes the fact that we're that we're all carrying. The problem with that is is he's he's short staffed. So now you've got a bunch of people walking around where we have increased crime. We've got a lot of people that are nervous, they're scared. We've had a couple of business owners confront people in the mornings. <laughs> breaking into other stores and it pulled their concealed weapon to, to ward them off. That has happened. Hasn't been reported, I don't think, but that's happened. It was a nine road. It was a nine road. I, <laughs> I talked to the owner. So, I mean, we're almost to the point in this town, there's a lot of people who are on the verge of vigilante justice. Okay? I, that's an honest truth. That is an honest yeah. truth. I've heard, I've heard that. Right. Uh, so, I'm not just talking out of my ass. You know this. That's a real thing. I, I, I say it's true. Absolutely. Right. There's a lot of people that they're going to start shooting first and just fuck the questions. Or fuck the language. In the house. But that's the way it is. You've got package theft going on all day long. You follow the UPS and FedEx trucks and stealing right off people's porches in broad daylight. Yeah. You've got people who are trying to break into other people's yeah. cars in broad daylight, trying to carjack them. Luckily, that person that tried to get carjacked the other day didn't carry, or that guy probably be dead. You know, is that what it's going to take for us to be able to get the money for our, our 
our sheriff's department to be able to do their job is for one of our upstanding citizens who is well respected in the community to shoot somebody and kill them. Because I mean, that's honestly where it's headed. And it's, it's going to be the wrong kid knocking on the wrong door at the wrong time of day. And that kid's going to get shot by somebody who's going to know, oh, this is all going on in this place. You need to figure out this budget for the sheriff's department. Or you guys are going to have to start paying for funerals. I mean, it's your choice. Well, if I could plant money for you, I would. Oh, well, I mean, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure it out. You need to dig in your pockets. I mean, you get paid money. Your, your boss gets paid money. The guy above him gets paid money. If they're not doing their job, if I don't do my job, I don't get paid. Hey, you know what you got to scream at is the state. The state is taking the money and giving it to everybody. No, because there's, listen, I guarantee you that there is always a budget passed where every one of our elected officials gets their paycheck. Whether or not we're in some kind of turmoil, whether or not we're in a deficit, whether or not we have money for anything else, those guys always get paid. So, so, okay, what kind of I'm down. Okay. Hold on. Brain. Folks, down. folks, please. More or less. I think that's true. And so part of what you do when you have a budget is you either cut back, which is Mr. Alsop has had all of our departments cut back so that this money can be used, or you increase revenue. So one of the things you're going to see in the CIR is if you ban it, then we have to use our money to, to you know, get rid of them. If we regulate it, then one of our recommendations is we go to the voters, we get a fat tax, and we pass that tax, and there wouldn't be any real operations the here, but they would be in Bakersfield out in the middle of ag places and greenhouses, and they would produce millions of dollars of revenue and then your community fights for the million dollars a year, or our community fights for the million dollars a year we need for 20 sheriffs. And then we're, then we're banking on the fact that it's going to continue to create revenue. No, so we're banking on the fact that they're not going to increase their revenue. But it's still a federal crime. Well, we'll and at any time that. the federal government can step in and start enforcing so, federal you know law, what? and that revenue would be lost. I have answers for those questions. I'm not going to give them to you right now. But I'm just telling you that that is also that if this community regulates it, it would still it would be taxed. It yes. would not be right. just the property taxes or just the sales tax. But that that is part of the proposal. So we can right? we, we yeah. already yeah. under civil forfeiture law take their property well, and money you, 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 to fund our sheriff's department. I will not have the county council come talk to you. That's the point. Rosamond needs to benefit from that. But anyway, yeah. other revenues. You know, we're always trying to attract businesses and those revenues and have people come here, and you're absolutely right. You either cut your services someplace else and move the money around. Why don't you just cut your pay instead of services? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I don't get work because I'm too expensive, I lower my rate. That's what I do okay. so that I can get well, money. I appreciate that. Well, I'm just saying, if you guys, if you guys are elected and put in these had, positions I, I, to do a job, I, I, you want to continue Track record of not doing that job. Our county employees. Sir, hold, not, hold on a second. Our county kids, employees have not had here. a raise for seven years, eight yes. years. Okay, our county you. employees have not had a raise okay. for seven years. You're She's, not, feel that. Okay. Just She's sure. not elected. Okay. I'm she is I'm not an elected person. I she is an well, employee. I mean, but it's a legitimate question. Yeah, you know, all of us were getting raised. She applied raises, for the job. And, you know, and the sheriff was she's not getting what he wants. I think it's a legitimate question. Thank you, Laura. You have a great legitimate question. Okay. Okay. So there you go. So we can get this meeting moving along. I will ask to for two more questions of our guests, and then we can unless he's done, we can wrap this up. Yeah, these guys have been asking. I'm Scott Travis, and I worked for Parks and Rec for like 35 years, and there's no Kern County Parks in Roseman anymore. They uh, combined the Parks Department and general services about a year ago. So either you retired or you had to go work in Bakersfield, basically. So they contracted out all the jobs in lure of having county employees do it. Now somebody that has a contract is the people you see mowing the lawn and cleaning the bathrooms. That's why the bathrooms are so dirty at Roseman Park now. Now, the bathroom at Roseman Park has been there since they built the park in 1958. <laughs> it's out of code and they, the county knows it's out of code and they've had, they spent millions of dollars on figuring out how they're going to put a new bathroom in there. And they've had bad budgets, so they've never done anything. Now, I worked for road department for the last five years. The road department is now public works. So they've come, what they're doing is the county's just combining two or three departments together, and that way they can save money. 
You understand? We understand. All right. Oh, is it money good? Yeah. Okay, one more question. So, um, okay, so other counties don't have oil, they don't have eggs, and they make their um, they make their money work. Why? What? Why is that the problem? I, I repeat your question again, sir. Well, I, I, you and others have said that the, part of the problems with the budget is that they don't, that that uh, oil has gone down in price. And, and agriculture has been reduced. Yeah, it went from $100 a barrel to 35 Right, so, but other, yes. com other counties don't have a, a big oil economies or, or eggs. Right, not like and, and they yes. make their they make their budgets work, so why? Well, LA County's budget is $30 billion. Uh, current county's okay, budget. Okay, but we have higher property taxes. No, I, I know you don't. It's like 25% of my Lower, lower, not even taxes. close. <laughs> My, my point is uh, the, sher uh, the sergeant will stand up and tell you, uh, I wish we could be like the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. Um, you know, they got it all. Because they have $30 billion, uh, $30 billion budget. Our, our countywide budget is about $2.5 billion. Uh, that's it. Um, a large part, that's all, we, it's all property tax revenue that's flows in. And oil and ag are uh, the giants of that revenue source. So when oil goes from 100 down to 35, it's a gut punch. And uh, so that's what we're dealing with. And so uh, as the oil economy uh, goes, so does, so does Kern County, which is why we've got a plan for things like that. But um, that's kind of why we're in the situation that we're in. Okay. So Second large large is the Wind has. Wind has. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I am. I'll be back. <laughs> so, I haven't left my rec carrier out of the tin at home, so I'm going to leave. Okay. <laughs> we don't blame you. Number eight, community announcements, yeah. uh, modified representatives, community service organizations. We've got a big problem in this town in the last three years with this water problem and everything. My property values are crashing. Everybody in this place is. Everybody is now parking their cars, their 30 foot Class A mobile home, their boats, every toy they got on what used to be the lawn. This looks like shit. This place is starting to look like a ghetto. You go up to courts now, I got guys on my court. One guy's got eight cars. One guy's got four in the drive, two up in the gravel. And of course, originally, there was plastic under the gravel. The car's driving not to break the gravel. Now there's weeds coming out. Can you call it code co co compliance? Yeah. There you go, code compliance. It, it's a free for all in this yeah, town. There's no deal with compliance. Jim there is code compliance. Actually, they do. Yeah. Code compliance, job. if you call code compliance, they will come They out. have to know about it first. Yeah, they will come. Yeah. Unless you're blind, you go over this town, it's everywhere. It has to be, and they can't self initiate. I need to answer so that. So, in order for code compliance to enforce the rules, there needs to be an official complaint filed against whatever the issue is. So they can't just go around and see a problem and say, oh, I have to enforce it. There needs to be a, an official complaint filed by either neighbors or somebody within that community. And then they do they do a great job at getting on it and correcting the situation. So, because I'm, I'm retired from that, I'm asking so I should spend the next two solid fucking weeks driving around town, launching a full on post I have a couple of right. you can okay. add to your well, One thing, folks, yeah. well, okay. okay. yeah. yeah. hold on, sir. Oh, wait a minute. Our public meeting, can we please keep the language at least PG-13 radio? <laughs> 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 I do know, I do know <laughs> public compliance workers. I call them on stuff I've seen around town that I thought was an eyesore to our community, and their response was immediate. Mm -hmm. okay. So it does work. It does. Same with the road. I've called in on potholes. Uh, obstacles in the road. They have a website you can go to. You just type in what's wrong, the sites, and they come out right away. Well, that gentleman over here that we just spoke, uh, I was amazed. I called them and they immediately picked up stuff. I've actually gone by there and seen them working. So I'm very thankful. So it works, you guys. Call, 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 or email. And don't give up till it's done. It works. It's, it's, it's running rampant. It's all over the It town. works. It works. 
if you have access to a computer, I got two you go questions. I think Jack, you had your hand up in the pan. It, it spells it all out. Uh, I looked Jack at it because I have the same people living on my screen. Yes, I'd like to address the board. And this is regarding a text or an email that was sent to you, Mr. Woods, and it was sent to a citizen of our community. It says, I'm hearing a rumor that the pot shops donated 30000 to the chamber. Now, this was sent to a citizen of our community. It wasn't sent to the chamber. It wasn't sent to one of our board members. That's a lie. I'm the it's citizen have, that sent I that text to here. him. Well, I'm the one who sent it to him. He did not send anything to anyone. The text, he sent it to another. That's a lie, Rick. Right I here I have it in print. Yes, I but sent it sit to... There. You want me to say the facts. gentleman's name? I, I don't think we need to give Okay, but the point name. is, well, if you're going to come up here and say uh, something... No, I, I, this is my like three minutes, sir. Okay, go you ahead. You don't have a right to talk at this three minutes. This is my three minutes. This is like on the TV Isn't show. that how it works? Public yeah, comments? You're on the clock. I, okay, yeah. I'm on the clock. Then what happens? So it wasn't sent to one of the chamber members. This starts floating around, right? And then it talks about um, on um, July 6th, they said that uh, it hits Facebook. And it talks about uh, the chamber accepting uh, $15,000, and they're um, kind of concerned about this money. You know, this information gets out there, you know, and it says, um, I have confirmed from two different sources. People confirm this, but they never even contacted the chamber that we got this $30,000 or, or we got this $15,000. I guess the $30,000 was too much money. But 15,000 sounded a little more logical, right? And then on Facebook, this is all on Facebook, so you guys can go back and research. And it says that the chamber refused um, membership from the pot shops. We never ever got an application. How can we refuse that people membership if we never got it? You know, I feel that, you know, with um, uh, our chairman here um, putting this out there, from the RMAC and asking these questions is what you, you did is you put out fake news to the media and then some other people ran with it. I am Roseman carries all that stuff. And that's where most of it was. We never got that fifteen or thirty thousand dollars that you guys put out there. Yes, we did get ten thousand dollars. I got it right here. We got ten thousand dollars. We got ten thousand dollars from First Solar. They made a donation to us for our event center to build our event center. And I just think for you guys to put that information out there and for Ion Roseman to run is do, slapping us in the face. The chamber that's worked hard for this community for three and a half years is <coughs> not right. And why, why you didn't contact us if you had these questions is beyond me. I mean, you have my email address, you know Jack. You know, Pam, you know all of us, but yet you didn't come to us. You three minutes of never men said anything. It was a disgust, disgusting thing that you did, Lord. Okay. Well, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, with my three hold on, hold on. I'm going to speak right now, sir. He, I, it's his, it's his public comment period. I'm going to speak right now. I was discharged publicly, and I'm going to speak right now. He gets three minutes. Three minutes. You're on the clock. Now, this board and me representing this board never said a word to anybody. I heard somebody contacted me that they had heard that the Chamber of Commerce accepted $30,000 from the pot shops. I contacted a person, I'll leave his name out of it because I was under the assumption he was on the Chamber board. And I've got a copy of the email right here and I'll show it to anybody in this room that wants to look at it. It says, blank, I am hearing a rumor that the pot shops donated $30,000 to the chamber. Is this true? And if the $30,000 is incorrect, have they donated any money? Thanks, Greg. There's nothing on here that RMAC, thanks Greg, chairman of the RMAC. I was, as a private citizen, I was contacting who I thought was a representative of the chamber and asking a question. And then I received a response. Greg, I have heard rumors that they are making donations as well. 
though I have not heard any number attached to the rumor until now. I have not heard anything from chamber meetings, but I was a little late this last week. I can ask around. That end quote was the end of the conversation and the entire length of the conversation. So if anybody wants to see it, it's here. There you go, cut it directly. Okay, so now I get my three minutes? Sure. Okay. That was my First email. off, that email was sent to me, and I am on the board of the chamber. Now, whether you know he is or not, you can still contact the chamber. As far as I'm concerned, that was poor business ethics on your part. He's retired. You're not a private citizen. You are the president of the Army. Okay? And it doesn't matter if you do it on a private basis. You still have the responsibility to follow good business ethics. And you know all you had to do was come to the chamber and ask us. We're fully transparent in everything we do. And we gave you answers like that. No problem. And we told you that that information is false. But you did not. You chose to go to a private citizen, ask that question. You think they're not going to send it to us? Of course they are. So your business ethics is incorrect and was uncalled for and discredited us as the Chamber of Commerce. And I, I'm pretty upset about it. It was fake news that you guys said. It was fake news. I didn't see it anywhere. <clears throat> so in the future, you need to think about what you do and who you work with. So how much money did you guys spend on donations? I didn't Bob's ask house. you, Greg. Okay. Exactly. Was this actually put on Facebook? Yep. Yes. Yep. It's it wasn't put on Facebook by me. It was okay. put on Facebook. So did the chamber get any money from the pot shops? Fifteen hundred dollars. Come over and meet with us if you, you want to talk to us. ABDC so ten about no. fifteen hundred dollars. You come talk to us. We're, we're a public forum. I'm just asking if you're denying it. Most of the time, it's a we're the most transparent and open organization. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm just wondering. So so what is what is the issue? Is the issue that you got money from a pot shop? Yeah. What is the issue? Yeah. What is the issue? Got what is the issue? Got money from it's not what is the issue? <laughs> the issue from us is that you guys should have contacted us about it instead of putting it out there. It's not us as a board, it's one individual. Well, somebody put it out on there. It wasn't one individual. Who? Terry. Well, it was I didn't put you, you're None of us. Putting it out. Out. I didn't put no. it out anything. I asked a question, and that was the end of it for me. You should have asked it to, to the right people. What? I wouldn't ask the water department about a school issue. Why would you ask somebody that's not even on their board or not even a member of her? I told you I thought he was a member of the board. Well, and he and he obviously forwarded it to a member of the board. As he should. But did that member of the board, after getting it forward, did he reach out to me and ask, ask answer my question? No. I found out about July 12th about all this. I was out of town. I guess right. I know, is, is it really an issue if they did? I mean, if there is an issue that they collected money from them, it, what is the issue? Why they, For why people that are so against pot like, shops in the first place, I, I kind of find it funny okay, that they the receive such money. Okay, the pot shops want to help us. They, are, they want to help our community. They're here. They live here. They work here. Are there too many? Yes. Way too many. They are still but federal felons. If they and want, they're considered a 501. Not criminals. No, not really. Plus, <laughs> plus the federal government doesn't want, allow pot They want. But if they're willing to help our community, why is it an issue? It's an issue because they're running illegal operations. Any government entity to take money from them is illegal. It absolutely is. Can you, do you have that in, where, is, where can I find that? Look at their ethics and politics. The because they are here. They are here illegally. They're here. We sell them businesses. We sell them. Our, our realtors are selling them land in businesses. Our owners are renting out their properties. That's on them, not on the pot shops. That's so, on the so you guys are part of the problem. The realtor. You're part of, part of the 22 pot shop problem that we have here in Rosemary. That is way too many pot shops. I'm not a firm believer that there are so many pot shops. There's too many. I agree. 100%. So let's weed in and weed out. Uh, but the yeah. ones that are going to stay here, why not let them donate to our community? 
Yeah, I mean, you got to realize that Why Cal City just passed a huge deal where they're going to put in thousands of acres of commercial marijuana growth facilities. So, it's like, yeah. so I got right. a comment. So, they did nothing right. wrong. I got I one comment. Wrong. We're, we're public, so, comment. public comment. Public comment. Public comment. Take that long. Three minutes. The issue is not with the pot shops donating anything. Okay. Prior to this meeting, if you ask that man over there about anything on Diamond Street, his biggest concern are the status of the trees and the pots. Completely ignoring the 14 some odd pot shops in this town that are businesses that are running that should be eligible to join a chamber of commerce. So when they want to peddle their influence, pot shops, and they come forth and they say, hey, we want to give you guys something. Let's build a skateboard park. Let's do a water splash pad. And Lance Idle allegedly tells him, no, we need help with the events center. And I'm not going to acknowledge the donation until after the work is done because the town will get up in arms over this and also make it cash. 30,000, 10,000, 5,000, doesn't matter. 15,000, 1,500, who knows? Under those circumstances with a lack of transparency is completely wrong. That's my concern. And yes, I helped spread some of that. I passed it on as a concerned community member that we have a chamber of commerce that's set on their ass while this town is going to hell. We've got an RMAC who does nothing. Thank God he's off the board. Anyway, I've got That's it. Okay. Unless there's any other um, comments from the public, we're going to close public comments and move on with the rest of the agenda. Not, uh, okay. As you're aware, I have only got one copy. So I'll read it. As you're aware, Director, um, we wrote a letter to Congressman McCarthy, and we sent it to our uh, Board of Supervisors for their review and to Kern County Council for their review. And um, the letter was accepted, but what it came back for was uh, Supervisor Scribner wanted us to have the letter addressed to him and uh, he didn't change any of the wording except to who it was uh, addressed to because he wanted to take a separate cover letter and send that to Congressman uh, McCarthy himself. And which uh, we discussed at the last meeting that um, I didn't have a problem with it. To me, it's not important who, who uh, talks with the, the Congressman. Uh, what's important is that it the congressman gets addressed on this, and we have the support of the uh, our supervisor. So I will read the letter as it came back to us from Supervisor Scribner's office, and it is ready for our signatures if we adopt the letter tonight. To the Honorable Zach Scribner, District 2, Kern County Supervisor, from the Roseman Municipal Advisory Council, where he had marijuana dispensaries in Roseman and Kern County. Supervisor Scribner, we the Board of Directors of the Roseman Municipal Advisory Council and on behalf of the businesses, organizations, and the community of Roseman are sending you this letter regarding the explosive and unchecked growth of medical marijuana dispensaries in Roseman, California. Currently we have at least 14 marijuana dispensaries in Roseman with 10 of them south of Roseman Boulevard between Sierra Highway to the east and Diamond Street to the west. This is right in the heart of our downtown and business district. The existence of these marijuana dispensaries is having a very severe impact on crime levels, negative impacts on other Roseman businesses, a negative impact on property values, driving local businesses out of business or forcing their relocation and degrading the quality of life for the residents of Roseman. Supervisor Scriveners, as you are aware, California legalized medical marijuana in 1996 when California voters passed Proposition 215 by 55.58% to 44.42%. But in that same election, voters in Kern County rejected Proposition 215 by a margin of 59% to 41%. And even though voters approved Proposition 215 statewide, it was not a landslide decision. But the Kern County results show that the voters by a huge margin clearly voted against this measure. Since the passage of Proposition 215, Roseman has, been, has seen an explosion of dispensaries open in our small town. On November 8, 2016, 
the voters in California voted in favor of Proposition 64, legalizing the recreational use of marijuana with the recreational sales of marijuana scheduled to take effect on January 1st, 2018. This proposition was passed by the voters of California by a margin of 56.4% to 43.6%, similar to the numbers from 1996. Yet again, Kern County voters rejected Proposition 64 by a margin of 53.7% to 46.3%. Supervisor Scribner, marijuana use and possession has always been and still a violation of federal law. And due to recent statements and policy memos from Attorney General Jeff Sessions, it is obvious that the federal government has no intention of backing down from this stance or easing federal laws regarding marijuana use and or possession. On January 1, 2018, when it becomes legal to open retail sales of marijuana in the state of California, that the number of dispensaries will easily <coughs> double or triple in Roseman. And because Roseman is the gateway to Edwards Air Force Base and the presence and accessibility of illegal drugs in Roseman, that Edwards Air Force Base could close the Western Gate to, to force base personnel to bypass Roseman altogether. Even though this is a remote possibility, it could become a reality. And if, if that were to happen, it would destroy Roseman economically. Supervisor Scribner, there is a way out of this dilemma. Proposition 64 has a provision in it that reads, cities and counties could also completely ban marijuana-related businesses. This decision must be made prior to January 1st, 2018. We know and understand that the Kern County Board of Supervisors and Kern County Council have been working very hard to address this issue. And it is a powerful letter. Obviously, it is one that he agrees with, that we need to enlist, uh, solicit the help of our assemblymen and uh, to combat this problem. So, I think it's made it very clear, I mean, this board has made it very clear where we stand on marijuana issues. And the Board of Supervisors is making it very clear on where they stand, as, long, and as well as the county. I don't know what the end result is going to be. Um, we'll know come October, but until that time, we're continuing to fight to have zero marijuana dispensary in this community. And um, so with that, I would, um, if there's any discussion on this, if not, then I would like to. I have a point. You got to, it's, it's, you wrote something wrong in there. Come January 1st, they won't be considered dispensaries if they're selling recreational marijuana. They will be recreational marijuana shops. Dispensaries are still going to be a separate entity, licensed and regulated under the medicinal marijuana laws. The shops that open up after July 1st that are going to sell recreational marijuana will not be dispensaries, and you will not need a doctor's slip to go into those. You would just have to have an ID and be 21 years of age. Dispensaries after January 1st will still be regulated by the fact that you will need a doctor's recommendation to be able to go into those dispensaries, and those will still operate under the 501 nonprofit organization co-ops that they are right now. After Jan January 1st, when the shops open up for recreational, they will be licensed businesses, not considered co-ops, and they will be under the same tax laws as any other business that opens up into that community. So if you're going to send that letter and you want to say that after January 1st that we're going to be covered with an influx of dispensaries, you're wrong. We're already covered with an influx of dispensaries. Come January 1st, we're going to be covered with an influx of smoke shops that are just going to sell marijuana to whoever they want as long as they show an ID. Now, I will say that I've been to them up in Washington. I've seen what their recreational program is when it comes to marijuana. It's highly regulated. It's highly covered. It's highly taxed. And those states that do have recreational marijuana as a legal legality are making more money in taxes off of that than they could have ever imagined. There's been no evidence of crime rates increasing in any of those states. There's been no evidence of anything increasing, of accidents increasing. There's been no evidence of any negative effects other than restaurants have opened up more and <clears throat> there's a lot less opiate uh, abuses and prescription medication abuses in those areas. 
So I understand a lot of people in this town don't like the medicinal marijuana dispensaries, and that's fine. That's your choice, and that's your decision. Um, there are people who definitely do need to have medicinal marijuana due to some legitimate illness that it does benefit them. Is that a majority of the people going to these shops? Absolutely not. But come January 1st, none of that will matter because those people who don't need a legitimate doctor's slip to get the, the prescription will be able to go to any other shop that they want that's recreational. So if you don't want recreational shops here, then you need to reword your letter to say that come January 1st, the dispensaries that we have in this town, some of them will convert to recreational and we will be covered with a deluge of recreational shops due to the fact that Cal City has authorized the grow of commercial recreational marijuana there. So now they have it, their option, their choice. Right. They can either say no marijuana dispensaries of any kind in our county borders. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're hoping the current county board of supervisors will do. Never gonna happen. But you got Cal City spending millions. But they're in our county. They can that's the current county board of supervisors. They can make that regulation. Okay. I'm just saying. And as for LA County, why do the LA County Board of Supervisors just passed an ordinance uh, three weeks ago, I believe. Mm -hmm. And it simply said no dispensaries whatsoever in unincorporated, unincorporated areas of LA County. Okay. So that means Quartz Hill, uh, all the outlying areas outside of the city limits of Lancaster will not be able to have any kind of pot shop. And then RX Paris said they can The can't point have is if LA County can do it, Kern County can do the same thing. Uh, Cal City wants to have 450 of them inside their city limits, fine. They're but they, they, can, they can ban them in yeah. unincorporated okay. areas, which we are. We are not a city. So what about all those people that work there that live here in this town? What about those buildings that are a business right now? I mean, are, do you have businesses to go in them? Are you actively pursuing other businesses to go into these buildings to replace? Each come out for the area, I think we'll be better off. Right. And it'll limit it to one or two or zero. Right, and that's fine. I don't like I said. There I personally think it should be I regulated so we can get I can appreciate the fact there's there are people here, such as yourself, that you know are not against the pot shops. Me I'm on just a not personal, me money. on a personal level, or oh, or, right. or anybody, anybody that's pro pro where pot shops pro money. What's okay, okay, but, but the point is, I'm just saying, where I don't have a problem with that. Okay, but me on a personal level. I have a problem. I, want to make a deal I think one <coughs> shop in our town is too many pot shops. Well, that's Here. not a consensus with the town. If you're to represent the town being elected that way, you can't let your right. You have the base about eventually closing the gate. That's a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. You don't want to put that in your letter. That's that's not good business. Mm -hmm. Just my thought. Yep. If you don't know, I would pass that out. Okay. Um, this letter is about the issuance of the environmental impact report. I'll second that. So we uh, make sure that we're not chasing a tail. I'll second the motion. All right. I have a motion to table item E until after the EIR comes out. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Why do you want to table it? I just want to table right now, but it's all. Oh. Yeah, it's all just good. Okay. Um, we can move to B. Uh, we've got to get a consensus of the board to move past A. A little clarification on this, Josh. Mm -hmm. Is this talking about paying for the uh, for the election. For, for the right. candidate statement for all candidates or just incumbents on this board? Well, we just be yes here. Yeah. Maybe like just say yes. Actually, I can't. I don't want to answer anything definitive on that because I don't know. But it is okay, just I, I think that's what it's. I make a motion to table resolution 717. Yeah. I will talk with the legends about that tomorrow and clarify that. We don't have clarification we, 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 can, we can table the resolution because I, I wanted to get that clarified and I, I read this thing over and over 
And it just, to me, it, yeah, I, I, it's, 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 it's vague because I feel that, you know, if it's just paying for candidates that are on this board, mm -hmm. then I don't think that's right. I mean, if it's going to pay for anybody running for this board, if, if the county wants to pay for the candidate statement, okay, that, that's, that's a different story. But uh, to pay for the people on this board, then that's giving an unfair advantage to the incumbents over the challenger wanting to get on this board. So, if we, so, can, so if we can get that clarified, you know, one way or the other, mm -hmm. and then we can bring it back for our next meeting. So this yep, I'll turn that up tomorrow. We have a motion table. Give me a second. Okay, I'll give a second. Does anybody ever call on those candidate statements? No, not on this board. Mm -hmm. People do. Yeah, them. Actually, last last year was a, last year was the very first year that we actually had a true election on this board. How Everything much? else has been appointed by the yeah, board. Yeah, but Jerry, how much was it? Jerry, how much was it? Uh, here about seven, eight hundred. My last campaign it was fifty, six hundred. What? Just yeah. to be put in the ballot that they mail? Yeah, but... No, it's, um, it's, it's a candidate ballot. statement. Yeah, if you, if you, if you submit, if, was that the one where if you uh, submit to the campaign finance information... No, 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 this is just oh. your statement. This is the statement that, that you put on the ballot? Right, the ballot. Uh, on the, the booklet that's sent out? It describes who you are and yeah. where yes. you will come from. It costs $700 and, uh, for this board that's per true. person yeah. to do that. Oh, seven hundred dollars per person. I think it's fifty-six hundred. No, that was my last. So that campaign. depends on the size of the election and how many that people are voting in that area uh, at yeah. the time. You think you went for a current county board of supervisors? Well, that's a lot of money. Either way, seven hundred dollars for. I don't think anybody ever has. Okay. Uh, okay. First, second. I, I, for, no, we have a first, good. second. Uh, All favor. Favor. Right. So bad. Favor. Favor. So so item C. C. Aye. Aye. All right, item D, adopt resolution 7, 2017-03, adopt a tie-breaking procedure. I'll make a motion. Motion made by Director Wright, do I have a second? Second. Second made by Director Parkman. Uh, this is just simple, we can, we can uh, decide to any tie to be decided by a coin toss, and uh, <laughs> is that actually what the resolution says? <laughs> yeah, they, they, you got to race around the building. I probably went. Toss or throwing a name out of the hat. So uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. Break pretty quick. I need to take a roll call. Well, we got to get decide what we're going to do first. I thought well, the procedure it. was already listed out. Well, no, we, no. You can we can make a decision. You can draw a name out of a hat. Flip a coin. Um, Do a coin toss. Yeah, it's, it, we've always got a hat. Are you real snake eyes? I don't see anyone with a hat. So it's really up to what well, you guys want to head away from it. <laughs> Leave it up to the only woman on the board. <coughs> I like that idea. I love it. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Sorry, that was just unjust. <laughs> so do we okay. need to make a motion for the coin toss? <coughs> we need to make a motion for the coin toss. I make a motion that we use a coin toss. I'll second. Second. <laughs> All right, that's Okay. Motion was made by no, Director. No, we use a quarter or a penny. Donna <laughs> Morris. <laughs> uh, Susan B. Anthony. And uh, <laughs> second by Director Gerald Morris <laughs> to use a coin toss as a tie-breaking procedure. I won the board member. <laughs> In a specific year coin? I got to double tail. Roll call vote. Right? Yes. Gerald Morris? Yes. Hernandez? Donna Morris? Yes. Parkman? Yes. Wood? Yes. Uh, five yes. Passed. Okay, item 13 Director's Agenda Referrals. I've got one idea, maybe. That I don't know if it's worth it, but if everybody can think about this, we're in Kern County where our sales tax is seven and a quarter and it's nine and three quarters in LA County. Is there something we can do to maybe get some business here? Maybe get somebody to build some stores? I don't know, maybe the Chamber of Commerce might want to do something like that, but you got to be pissed off at it. Well, you know, we're just busy for sure. 
Just something to think about. I have a comment on that if you don't mind. Uh, um, and real quick though, the business aspect of it. And the presentation for us <laughs> at our next month's meeting. Crazy trip. All right. We will uh, we'll put them on the agenda. <laughs> okay. Any other items for new business? Okay. Item 14, director's comments. Director Morris. I think it's time to go home. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Department. Everybody's excused. Director Morris. None at this time. And I have nothing as well.